Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Coghill, City Council Representative for the 4th District, and we are reconvening a meeting that started yesterday with the, um, I'm the Chair of the Parks and Recreation Committee, and I have with us our Budget Director, Mr. Bill Urbanic, and he will start with a brief overview. Do we want to call uh, the Director and Louie to the table now? If you would please come up and just, you know, give your name and you all know the routine. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, I'm, I'm Lou Ann Horan. I'm the Assistant Director of the Senior Program for Parks and Recreation. Thanks for having us today. Hello, everybody, um, and um, Councilman. My name is Catherine Vargas. I'm the Assistant Director of Community Recreation. Uh, good afternoon. Glad to be here. Uh, thanks, Councilman. Uh, Ross Chapman, Director of Parks and Recreation. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, the, uh, the mission of the Department of Parks and Recreation is to seek and enrich and enhance the lives of City of Pittsburgh uh, residents by fostering lifelong learning through programs, social connections, healthy active living, and culturally diverse recreational and educational opportunities uh, within all the city parks and community recreation facilities. The uh, budget for uh, this year for the uh, Department of Parks and Recreation total budget is $4,776,000. It's an increase of a little more than $10,000 or 0.2%. Uh, total full-time positions are uh, 46 and a half, plus 1.26 uh, million uh, for uh, funding of part-time and seasonal employees, uh, majority of which are, are lifeguards uh, that come on in the summertime. Uh, salary and position changes of note, uh, there's reorganized operations and, and administration managers uh, and finance administrator uh, into two fiscal contracting coordinators. There's a net savings in those two positions uh, through that coordination of $26,660. There's also reorganized uh, two uh, recreation supervisors and one program coordinator three into three additional program supervisors. That's a net increase of uh, $24,880. Parks and Recreation's non-salary subclasses were reduced by $120,000, or 17%. Largest change is driven by the cleaning contract, which is being moved uh, to DPW operations. I think we had some discussion about that briefly mm -hmm. today. Uh, that was $125,000 in 2019. It's increased to $185,000 per this morning's legislation. Um, Additional minor changes include operational supplies, where there's an increase of $30,000. Office supplies decreased by $15,000. Repairs decreased by $14,000. Recreational services increased by $10,000. Printing and binding decreased by $2,500. Uh, landscaping decreased by $2,000. And data processing decreased by $1,500. Parks has a handful of operating revenues, including swimming pools, uh, which uh, nets in about $363,000. That's a half a percent decrease from 2019. The summer foods program, $55,000, the same as prior years. Uh, meeting room rentals, $23,262. That's an 88% increase from 2019. And the uh, Regional Asset District Fund, uh, Trust Fund, salaries and benefit reimbursements of $84,600, a 4% increase from 2019. Parks and Recreation has no capital budget. Uh, it used to, the Department of per uh, Public Works is the responsible uh, department for maintenance and reconstruction of all city parks, ball fields, recreation, and senior centers and pools and spray parks. Uh, all parks related capital budget items will be discussed during DPW's uh, budget hearing Thursday, December 5th. So if you're interested, please tune in. Uh, parks uh, has several trust funds. Uh, one is the Regional Asset District Trust Fund. Uh, the projected be beginning balance uh, in that trust fund is to be $344,000. Anticipated revenue over 2020 is $1,237,000. There's no uh, position changes of note. Uh, 
uh, park ranger was previously budgeted solely to Mellon Park Trust Fund. Uh, it's now uh, split between the Mellon uh, and this uh, and the ARAD Trust Fund, but it's not an additional ranger. Uh, staffing is now 5.6 uh, full time, plus funds for uh, part time and seasonal. Uh, Mellon Park uh, Tennis Trust Fund beginning project balance was 2.1 million. Is projected to be 2.1 million. Anticipated 2020 revenue, 390 thousand dollars. There's no position changes of note. Uh, staffing uh, from a budgetary basis reduced by 2.9 full-time plus part-time. Uh, senior Citizen uh, Program Trust Fund, beginning balance, 56,000. Uh, anticipated 2020 revenue, uh, 1.5 million, which includes $750,000 of community development uh, block grant funds uh, budgeted in the capital budget. Uh, there's no positional changes of note. Staffing remains budgeted at 30 employees uh, for 2020. Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund uh, beginning balance is anticipated to be $602,000, anticipated revenue of $525,000. Uh, no positional changes. Staffing remains budgeted at uh, two full time plus funding for part time and seasonal employees. The Frick's, uh, Frick Parks Trust Fund. Projected beginning balance, uh, 1648000 Anticipated 2020 revenue of $825,000. Uh, trust fund no longer used for maintenance of Frick Park. Now it's solely a pass-through for the Parks Conservancy and the Environmental Center. Uh, the other line item is the Phipps Conservatory. Uh, current balance is $70,000. That Those funds are now controlled by the Department of uh, Public Works. And that was uh, per our agreement with the uh, with Phipps when they separated from the city uh, to pay for the steam heating bill. Um, there's, as we've mentioned uh, before, and uh, there's no uh, parks trust fund uh, that's created at this time, uh, so we're not sure on how that may or may have, uh, not affect the budget. Um, the special events trust fund was transferred to public safety in 2018 and the Shenley Park Rink Trust Fund was transferred to DPW also in 2018. So that's why you don't see those, uh, those things there now. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, uh, hand it over to the director uh, for any comments or uh, highlights he would like to include uh, for 2020. Before we do that, director, if I could just uh, mention that we're joined by two other council members, Ms. Darlene Harris, thank you for attending, and Ms. Deborah Gross. Uh, thanks for attending. Nice to see you all. I just want to um, <clears throat> thank Council, thank Councilman Coghill, uh, Budget Director Urbanic. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'd like to, pretty excited to be sitting up here today with two assistant directors. Um, you all know Luann Haran, but senior programs, fantastic to have her. Excuse me, <clears throat> I think I'm getting a little cold. And, and newest to the team, I think she's in her sixth week. Mm. Right, uh, Catherine Vargas, so she's Community Recreation, Youth and Families, and Catherine comes to us with a, a, an array of experience, and already she's amplifying what we're doing in the department. So uh, we've had a lot of support from council, from the administration. We've had a lot of direct support from Councilman Coghill. So we're happy to be here today to talk about 2020. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Thank you. Luann, did you wanna? I'm always happy to um, be here and represent Parks um, for the um, upcoming year in the budget. Um, we're doing good things in the senior program. I've been out visiting the centers, um, working on trying to bring up our attendance in our senior centers, trying to um, implement some late afternoon programs to try and bring in some of the um, younger generational um, consumers into the programs and uh, we're working on some of that we're making some things happen um, morning sides trying some more programs offering some um, i believe beachview is going to be bringing some programs like into that five to eight o'clock range so we can try and bring in some of the younger seniors like i said that maybe are home watching their grandchildren oh okay that are home watching their I'm sorry, that's getting back to your Animal Rescue League comment I heard earlier. <laughs> that's okay. That's all right. I love animals. I think I she'll them. support that. 
<laughs> I know she would. She know, loves animals I like I do. We all love animals, I and know. we all love parks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, good answer for her phone. That's a good yes. ringtone. It fits Not her perfectly. to raise taxes. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I recall her favorite animal was a Rottweiler she would bring in for a visit with the little painted nails and stuff that would come to visit all the time. So sweet. So sweet. That's right. Um, but yes, uh, so yeah, and I've been out visiting the centers, um, talking to them as, as I'm new to my role as well. So um, I go out to visit, talk with the seniors all the time. Um, I've made a couple visits up to Sheridan, working with that group. Um, and I've been to um, Beachview, Homewood, which uh, I find Homewood to be a very well attended center. Yeah. That community up there is wonderful at Homewood. Um, they're, they're so engaged there. Um, we've done a lot of work at the Market House, getting mm -hmm. that reopened with the air conditioning, mm -hmm. made a lot of improvements there. We'll still make them. Um, and we're going to keep trying to bring in um, a lot more seniors um, into the program, um, trying to um, make better relationships with everyone um, in the community, trying to advertise more. And um, what I'm going to try and do is we're going to try and put a little thing on our Facebook page, try and showcase a member at each one of the centers, mm -hmm. uh, maybe once a month. Um, I went around to Sheridan, and I met a young a attendee there, and um, she gave me her story about how that center at West End saved her life because mm -hmm. she was sitting at home by herself every day and real lonely and didn't know what she was going to do, and somebody invited her to come in and attend the senior center, and she did. And, um, and she told me how it saved her life, and I asked her if she would appear on and do a little segment on um, Facebook, and she said she would. So we're going to go out, and, and that's my segment. We're going to start doing that on um, Facebook and go around and get a little story from everybody about, you know, how the centers help them. And I think that will help market our centers and, you know, and get the people at home that aren't, you know, feel that they're not ready for a center to get a sense of come on in and try and get a sense of community. So, um, so I'm out there trying, you know, right. to bring more people in. Right. And before I make any comments, uh, Catherine, did you want to say anything? I mean, and let me ask you this, Catherine: Are you are you from Pittsburgh, or are you, are you just new to the department, or are you new to Pittsburgh? Um, so well, I um, I've been in Pittsburgh for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. um, so new to the department, but been um, in the city. Uh, my background is in youth programs. Uh, so I'm really excited the last six weeks. It's been a bit of a whirlwind, but I've made it out to almost all the rec centers, meaning uh, this the uh, aquatics team, um, our food program team, our city sports team. I mean, for me, what I'm learning is that there's really amazing people doing this work. Um, I know like in your district, uh, mm -hmm. Hakeem, I got to make it out mm -hmm. to the Community oh, yeah. Hoops Absolutely. event. And yep. just to see the energy um, that is happening in these rec centers, it's more than a, a place that families might go to. It's a connection point that they're making met so many people already similar to Lou's story, um, young people who now work in our rec team who grew up in the rec centers. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are really important community assets. Um, so I'm learning that, being out there. Uh, it's also been really great working with this team. Learned a lot from uh, Director right. Chapman right. and right. Luann. Um, uh, so I've, right. I've had a great experience so far, and I'm hopeful that in the coming months I get to come out and meet with everybody um, at council and get to know from your perspective what's going on in your district and also how my role can help facilitate some of your goals. That's so. great, Catherine. Well, welcome, and uh, I will say I was supposed to play in that basketball. <laughs> I, I hear another hurry. one's we coming up in January. So <laughs> I'm scared I might not be able to oh. walk the next day, though, but, but I will do the next one. But I will say Hakeem has been phenomenal up there. This guy, he has his pulse on the neighborhood. He knows the kids that come in that bring trouble and the ones that are good and bad. And this time of year with Santa Claus and all, he's making a list and he's checking it twice, I got to tell you. So he's, he's on top of everything. And... Um, from my own personal experience, I will say working with Lou and can I call you Lou? Oh, yes, I hear yes, everybody yes. calling you Lou now, right? Yeah, call okay, me Lou. Yes, okay. Yes. And Director Chapman, uh, nothing but positive, really engaging experiences. I mean, when we we threw this, um, uh, what was it up at Moore Park? It was the anniversary, 85th anniversary, and and your work on that was out of this world. I mean, he could not have done that without you. And I think we had probably two, 3,000 people there throughout the day. It was incredible. I mean, <clears throat> the mayor came up and there was just people everywhere. And it just brought the community together. Um, people I haven't seen for 
40 years, you know, so, so it really was fantastic. And without your help, there's no way that happens, whether it was the stage, the permitting, everything that, that comes along with it. So, so, and I always toot your horn, and it's not just because I chair the committee, it's because I see it firsthand. I don't do the same about all the departments. In fact, most of the departments I have a really good working relationship with, but, um, but yeah, it's really easy being the chair of your department. I get Thank zero you, complaints, you. Um, you know, and when events like I have up in the neighborhood and special events come about, um, you know, you're on the scene. I know, Ross, you were there, you know, when Tony Garino and we were putting this thing together and yes, I was kind of scratching my head and thinking, oh my goodness, is he, you know, what, it, no, what he's getting into, but <laughs> it went off beautifully and he credits you in your department fully for how that went off because um, I couldn't have done without so, so. Oh, can I say sure. one thing? You're talking about Christmas and Santa Claus and yes. our team <laughs> and um, anybody listening, please come downtown into mm -hmm. the city county building and see the lobby yeah. with all the gingerbread houses. <laughs> um, they're just absolutely beautiful since we've, I think there's what Ross, 475 yeah. gingerbread yeah. houses I, down there. I will second that. It just smells so I particularly so like the ones with huh? the bus coming out, yeah, you know, yeah, did you yeah, see those yeah. ones? But yes, yeah, yes. the creativity, it's the artistic hunt. ability, I'm in awe at some of those things. And you know, I consider myself a somewhat of an amateur sculpture artist myself. Mm -hmm. and and I want to enter one next year is what I really want They're to fabulous. do. Who, who, who does that? I mean, who, where do they come from? Their There's, schools and organizations. I yes. saw Girl Scouts and, and anybody who wants to. Is that yes. basically it? Yeah, and it, you know, there's a lot of, there's a big nod and hat tip always to the folks in public safety, the special events team who worked with our own community enrichment program, Nancy yep. Burns and her team. That's who facilitated that gingerbread house display, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. with a, mm -hmm. a lot of input from, from James Hill in the mayor's office. Right. So yeah. it looks wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're... And, and to your point about the uh, the event at Moore Park, we couldn't do that those kinds of things without the help of Public Works and others too. So Absolutely. it's a real collaborative effort. So I'm happy to Thank be right. I'm happy to facilitate anything when we mm -hmm. can engage and collaborate. Right. And I think our department does it pretty well with other departments and external entities. So yeah. that, that makes it that makes it all worthwhile. And, and thank us. you for pointing that out. Oh, you're you're right. welcome. There were you're others welcome. involved, as you said, yes, Public sir. Works and, always, and uh, always. others. Is that. You just got to watch Councilwoman Gross. I think she's been picking chocolates off the gingerbread house. Oh. <laughs> I haven't been anywhere near them, I promise. I promise. I actually so. haven't even seen them yet. I'm sad. I, I literally haven't walked through yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not above picking chocolate off of other places. So, <clears throat> so before I turn it over to Councilwoman Gross and Councilwoman Harris for their questions, I just wanted to say how impressed I am. It's not many times you put something in front of us, and uh, when we look at your operations, uh, decrease, 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 increase, decrease, decrease, more yes. decreases and increases. Yes. So it shows that you're fiscally, uh, you know, responsible, and uh, I love to see that myself. I think yeah. that's fantastic. So no matter if we're talking a thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars or a million dollars, every it penny all counts. Adds up. Every that's penny right. counts. That's right. Yes, so, it does. So thanks for your work. I'm proud to be chair of this committee. I, again, it's. I get zero complaints Thank on you. parks and recreation. Thank so. you, sir. With that, I'll turn it Thank over you. to um, which one of y'all would like to go first? Are you ready? I'm still looking I'm at still the catching section. my breath. Yeah. All right, I'm, yeah. I'll jump in then. Thank you. Um, great. Thank you all for being here. We're very excited about um, the, the programs that you were speaking about. I think council members that I've spoken with often agree that we wish we could do more programming. Um, so I really appreciate how much you're able to do with the budgets that you've been given. Um, as you were mentioning, I've got so many constituents who tell me stories about how they grew up in the, in the recreation centers, um, and we don't have a youth recreation center. So it's, you know, it's one of the things that is really a hot topic of conversation, I can promise you, in Bloomfield right now, because there's the empty building sitting there at the Bloomfield pool, which I know um, you all were so gracious to come out and do a walkthrough of the park. And, and that's really, since the conversations have continued for the last couple of months, really the desire to realize that for a park to be kind of a healthy, safe, welcoming area, you really kind of, the programming is an important element, right? So not just having an empty space, because that might not be the you know, safest place that you want to send your five-year-old or seven-year-old to unattended, but to have a place that's full of programming, that's full of adults, that's a safe place, that's full of activities. Um, it makes everything actually more welcoming. So we're, we're happy to talk about ways that we can empower you um, to do more programming in the parks. I'd like to 
shift a little bit to a slightly a couple of technical questions. I don't want to scare you with them because you heard some of them earlier today. Um, just a couple of hours ago, we approved the agreements to continue with these trust funds that Mr. Urbanik was just talking about. And so they were just given for provisional approval earlier today. And I, I asked a couple of questions and that, again, are the parks trust funds that already exist. It's not a new one to receive uh, the additional millage, but these are ones that are already housed in your section of the budget. The Rad Parks and Recreation Trust Fund, Mellon Park Tennis Trust Fund, Citizen, Senior Citizens Program Trust Fund, Special Summer Food Service Trust Fund, Frick Park Trust Fund, and Phipps Conservatory. It doesn't say the word trust fund, but I'm assuming because it's under the trust fund, so that also is. Yeah, all right. So, um, as noted, and we could see it on this, these are these documents online with Legistar Bill that you hand out to us as members at, here at the table? These will be. Yeah, okay, so, you know, people at home can pull these up and attach to this session. It's, as uh, Mr. Urbanic already stated, that what the balance is and what the revenue is projected to be. But what we also heard earlier today um, is that, for example, the Mellon Park Tennis Trust Fund is pretty straightforward. Like, if you lease out just that tennis bubble at the Mellon Park and you pay a permit fee, that, that all, every penny goes in this trust fund. Is that, am I understanding that correctly? Okay. Councilman, can I, I'd like to, so you're speaking about the facility usage agreement, uh, the legislation from the finance department, is that correct? Those today, agreements. Earlier today, yeah. Right. So the way that the facility uses agreements are used by our department, and we do have a record in a repository of those that we do, they're not, they're not permits per se. Permits are for shelter rentals, they're for birthday parties, they're for kind of one-off events. The facility uses agreements are kind of a, a longer standing mini lease agreement. Oh, so, I'm glad I asked because that's not what we were told earlier. Yes, ma'am. So they, they move uh, into an arena whereby at least we might have had you're a tennis maybe, club and you're saying this is our season and we want to have this fun on wednesday every week or something well for instance there may be there's a summer camp group that has utilized the warrington recreation center for a summer camp in conjunction with our programming there for a few years mm -hmm. now they want to come in and have come in for about two and a half months to utilize that space to amplify what we're doing in that center. This agreement allows us to seek clearances, to get insurance, and to have a lease agreement, a mini lease agreement. It's not structured over a, a five or 10 year period, but, but for a few months, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze here real soon. I, so I'm I sorry. Feel I, you, I feel um, you, I've got the same way today. I, I won't sneeze in your direction. Um, so what they allow us to do is to uh, engage uh, kind of a community partner an organization for more than a one-time event it's not exactly a community group it's someone that wants to have kind of a presence and help amplify program and it has a real com a direct community kind of response to it so the so, early the legislation earlier today allowed you to enter into those agreements yeah, any city department, it's, again, it's legislation that finance, and I think the policy was drafted by them a few years ago, two or three years ago, I'm not real sure. It moved, it seemed to move away from just some, in a department having an, an MOU with not a lot of meat there to having something where, whereby we collect insurance certificates. It goes to the law department, the finance department signs it. So it allows us to enter into a lease agreement for someone to help carry out our, our work for us so we had it's, I'm glad I asked let me let yes, me also say that one of the things I mentioned about these cooperative <clears throat> agreements is in every case it is something that we are not operating and someone is and so it's the terms of that understanding um, in every Who's doing which thing yes. and is there any dollars exchanged uh, I th that is the nature of a cooperative agreement. Y yes. Yeah, so these agreements, typically in most cases, there is some really modest fee structure to them. Um, it, that's not, it's my understanding, it's not part of the, the permit, the fee schedule. They're really nominal. It would be my preference to have no fee tied to these, quite honestly, because of the work they're doing in conjunction with the work we're doing, because it results in, to nothing. Um, the maximum of $10,000 
we probably see maybe $10,000 across all seven or eight that we might have had this past year. So it's been a mechanism for us to continue a community engagement touch point to help us do things that we just don't have the resources to do and, and or something that somebody else is really good at doing. And they might be representing an area or a group of kids or folks in a way that we can't quite do, facilitate mm -hmm. on our own. So for us, it's a really nice vehicle. And the fact that it's vetted by law and you know we meet with those folks and we've met recently about it. I'm, you know, Director, I'm gonna just ask some direct questions sure. then. So in the example that you mentioned in Warrington, yeah. Uh, where does that revenue go? Because it doesn't seem to fit into any of the trust funds that I'm interested in here. That revenue, since it's at a rec center, that would go into the general fund. Okay, so yeah, so I'm interested in these trust funds. So that's why I brought up the example of maybe the Mellon Park Tennis Trust Fund. Uh, that one I don't think we've ever... I think what... Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Luann might know this, but... Projected balance, anticipated 2020 revenue, $390,000. We don't have any facility usage agreements that go into mental and tennis. Okay, so, there, so what I was asking about then is technically correct that for the Mellon Park Tennis Trust Fund, that is just for when people pull a normal permit. The, the revenue that you see on uh, Director Urbanic's report is revenue from payments to play based on the fee schedule that's legislated for and people so you to, could just go to the website and you yeah, say i'm reserving yeah. the court for this time exactly. and that revenue goes in there that's correct now then you <clears throat> brought up something different which is that i'm just gonna wait in um other places there are then what did you call them again non something agreements non you just call them something. I, the facility usage agreements? The, facility usage yeah, agreements. That's, okay, so those are in addition and above and different than this. Yeah, I wouldn't say they're in addition to. They're just different. And if, so if somebody wanted to... I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to my questioning. I apologize. Sure, I'm okay. interested in these trust funds. So the Mellon Park Tennis Trust Fund, you pull, you rent the court. The money goes into this trust fund. Now, how is the money expended from this trust fund? It's right now. It's housed to support operational costs. There's, you'll see. Just some walk me through it. Just walk me through it. You need to buy new nets. Yes. yes. You get to yes. buy it out of this trust fund. That is correct. What happens? What ha What do you mean? How do we expend that yes, money? Yes, that's what the question is. How do you expend that money? It's yes. no different than we would. I mean, Luann can speak. Pay any, we pay invoices yep. for the nets. We'll pay for instructors from there. If we pay for um, tennis instructors that we you have. get an invoice. Mm -hmm. And then you just submit it through OMB. And when yeah, OMB JD cuts Edwards the check process, that gets signed by the yes. finance director and the controller, it's drawn down out of this account. Exactly. There's, it does not come to council table. No, unless it's an explanatory and you see it on the invoices. Okay. Similarly, yes. the RAD Parks and Rec Trust Fund. Let's say you need to spend some money out of the mm -hmm. anticipated $1.237 uh -huh. sure. this year. Yes. Um, yes. you are gonna spend what? This just talks about some staffing. Mm -hmm. What's an example that, of something that you would use this, that trust fund for? This oh. year, oh, the Alphabet Trails and Tails event, the big mm -hmm. annual event at Frick Park, that's in a rad park. We have, You we get have, a caterer, there's an invoice. There's, there's vendors. You there's, just say, I need to pay for this food, and this money comes out of this trust fund, yes. and it is not come to yes. council table. Now, we also have you know how we come every year and we do a, what we call the generic piece of legislation for consultants, 10,000 and under, we have a separate piece. We may have a contract there that we would, that's separate from those facility usage agreements. We will hire a consultant of some sort that we would pay out of that trust fund. That could come up. And that could be for a tennis instructor, maybe what we pay out of that RAD trust fund. So we might have um, Jose Mears, he's our tennis instructor. We might write it, if he's doing something in Shenley or something, we might write a consultant, which is separate, and we would pay that invoice as a, uh, it would go through the controller's process, so, but we'd have a contract for that, which is separate from those MOU agreements, which mm -hmm. is vetted through the law department process, mm -hmm. um, but it's not a facility usage agreement. Now, the council set up these trust funds, mm -hmm. and um, the controller mm -hmm. has to maintain them, yes. right? Absolutely. Yes. And then, but um, 
when were these set up? I mean, they were set up some time ago, right? A long time ago, yes. And so yeah. whatever language was used to set them up, it, they just went away. And they don't, the expenditures are just like a line item for you. That's outside of, you know, other than this conversation right now about how much money there is right here. Like uh, right now, the Mellon Park mm-hmm. Tennis Trust Fund has two million one hundred and thirty three thousand one hundred and sixty one dollars over over and it 20 has years an addition, that's the balance over 20 that's the years. balance that's, yes. that's today's balance over 20 years that's, i'm sorry yeah sorry that's today's balance mm-hmm. and the anticipated revenue is three hundred and ninety thousand mm-hmm. for this yes. year yes so similarly um these are funds that were set up <clears throat> and of no termination, they don't expire. They don't have to be renewed as a trust fund each year. And that, um, frankly, I don't know what the language is that was created around them. So they, we, we'd have to figure out what year council created them, go back to pull up that language and see what the structure of those trust funds are. Um, Councilman Gross, uh, in the back of the budget, uh, for the Mellon Trust Fund, for example, on page 343, we do detail the, the budget for the trust fund. Let, is the legislative language there that I was just saying I would have to look back the year it was created to it find gives, the legislative it, language? It essentially gives a description. It, it tells you the authorization, uh, authorizing resolution the year that was established and or changed. Back of the capital budget, I'm assuming? It, it would be the operating budget. Back of the operating budget. Do you have a page for us? Yes. Uh, for the Mellon Park Trust Fund, it would be page 343. These are the exact same page numbers as the PDF online, I'm assuming? Yes. The, so, again, people online, if they want to follow along, if you like I'm on one of those like educational video things. Believe it or not, we have a bunch of budget page. nerds out there that love doing this stuff, just like me. one here, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So there is a description at the top of this paragraph here that says, "Correct." it's not technically what the conditions are, but it's a gist. That's, that's correct. Uh, it doesn't have the exact wording, but it sort of does. It, it gives you the uh, idea of what the uh, resolution says. Uh, it does have the year. It does have the year. And the resolution yeah. number, so, so that's we, helpful. So you yes, can actually and, and look we can up pull the it up and legislation start. fairly easily. Uh, the Thank other comment I, I would make is that the budget line items are all there. So essentially, we are uh, you're able to view, and uh, by casting a vote on the total budget, you can, uh, you'll be approving, essentially helping to approve this as well, too. So approving on an annual. <clears throat> the only thing additional that I will say is that they are required to follow um, per the uh, uh, purchasing uh, requirements. Of course, the, for does the, city the controller's office well have then a line items that match these line item numbers of expenditures? Yes, they should. In the audit, so that would be in the combined CAFR. The CAFR will mention uh, these trust funds as other special funds. Yeah. And does it have those that detail of breakdown? It. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to ask the controller. So we know Take a look what at my CAFR to see that. I don't pay attention to that. Council has <laughs> projected to spend. <laughs> That's right. And the actual, but we uh, don't know, looking retrospectively, what was spent. Yes, uh, we could find that out, though. Yep. I mean, typically, yeah, there, and maybe that's a good suggestion that uh, uh, we should follow as we do in our budget, but have a, uh, yep. in this one, for example, have an actual 2018 to show what was expended as well, too. That's great. So we, uh, council did a few years ago required all trust funds to be uh, put in the budget. So, so there's, I have an additional question. So given these expenditures, when your budget, I think I'd lost my page when I went flip to the back here. Right. I see your personnel budget was roughly only about three and a half million. Mm-hmm. Is that salaries yeah. and benefits, or was I yes. just remembering one of the lines? Benefits, I think we're separate there. It doesn't actually say it on Bill's one pager. It was, I had to look it up here. Yeah, personnel and salaries were projected to be 3.3 million. All right. Just, so just salaries. Just salaries. With benefits, benefits and everything different. else, uh, that includes uh, health care and such, we go to 4.776. Yep. So did you lump the expenditures for consultants or salaries that are under the trust funds? So that tennis coordinator that you might want to pay out of something or the professional and technical services, well, there's some, some employee benefits and salaries that were paid, 
that are projected to be paid out of the Mellon Park Trust Fund. Correct. That is combined into the Parks and Rec budget? No, that does mm -hmm. not feed up. That's separate. That's separate. What what you see in what you see in this is the general fund budget. So Got that's it. our general fund operating. This would be a trust fund, so quote it you would consider it potentially off book. There are respect. there are other jobs off book, even in our current trust fund structure. Yeah, so they're on book. I'm just repeating the what trust you just fund. said. Yeah, they're on they're on book in the trust fund. Got it. They're Different section for. of the budget manual here. That's correct. Um, so you have your projected <clears throat> salaries that I lost the page of in Parks and Rec, again, just for clarity. Um, and then there are other jobs elsewhere accounted and paid for. All right, I just, just double checking on that. In fact, this one page from 343 to 344 shows um, full-time employees for 2019 at 3.5 and full-time employees at 2020 at 2.9 take part of this one just just checking mm -hmm. and then and then but they still those are city employees mm -hmm. but this the part-time so are just a dollar amount so I can reference yeah. that but the full-time are mm -hmm. um, afforded all the same benefits and rights and Correct. They're all civil service employees and have their it's union just a different pot membership. Of money. It's yeah. but it's still, it's a pot of money. Yes. It's oh yes. That and that's the topic of the day. Is the pots of money? That's why we're at a budget yeah. hearing. Yeah. All right. Correct. Thank you, stop Councilwoman there. Gross. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm really getting enthralled with trust fund talk. <laughs> I, really I look forward to a lot more of it. So, I did want to recognize uh, Councilwoman Teresa Kill Smith has joined us and. Um, I will turn it over. Hey, Councilwoman Harris, did you want, would, were yeah. you, were your hand, was your hand up? Did you have, were you ready to go? Yeah. Good deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, the reason I have, sorry I left the table, oh, but my love for animals. Yes. <laughs> there was a hawk got on uh, Grant and Fourth Avenue that was injured, so mm -hmm. we got oh. animal control oh, to take great. him over to the Wildlife Center. Right. So. We'll find out how he is later. <clears throat> but um, that's what my staff was ringing the phone for. Um, I, on the senior centers, now how many are there now? 13. Okay. And you should be coming up with a 14th one as soon as they work on Kelly Gettman okay. Center. Okay. Um, now, rec centers, how many rec centers do we have that we pay for? Ten. Ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're in every area except for basically the north side. We have We the, have one sm very small yes, one. Jefferson Rec. Right. That's right. Correct. And Jefferson? we have one very small senior center on the north side. So um, that's why the some of the neighbors are going out because they want to just put four walls up and not put Cali Rec back together again. So I'm hoping that Domi is hearing me mm -hmm. <laughs> on that one. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I actually we had quite a few more senior centers and we were supposed to have a new rec center that was supposed to take care of the seniors. Mm -hmm. Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, there was 1.6 million yes. sitting there. And the mayor decided to take that money out of there. Yes. Um, so uh, I don't think that's happening. So I'm hoping that Cali Rec uh, comes along in the historic building that it's in. Um, but I, I want to thank you all for what you do. Great job. Thank you. Uh, I, I don't know you as well. She's new. It's been six uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, And uh, I know you said something about you're with youth. Okay. Can you define that to me? What is that? Youth programs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I worked um, in after school programming for a really long time. Mostly, actually. Um, Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith used to work where I worked, um, uh, but um, working on um, uh, 
uh, everything from curriculum to activities to um, you know making sure food things like the food program uh, that is run actually the city runs the largest uh, food summer food programs summer programs after school programs some before school programs some during school so kind of everywhere um, I particularly worked most closely with high school students um, but I've um, done a lot of uh, work around um, curriculum professional development kind of things with younger kids as well Okay, with Pittsburgh Public Schools, or yeah, um, what yeah. are these partner? I'm trying to get to. Uh, sure. Uh, well, the what, is what is the city paying for? That's what I'm trying to find out. Respective to Sorry? Catherine's position, right? Oh, um, do you want? Yeah. I well, yeah. You please do. Okay. Um, but okay. I, I would think that. Um, well, I six weeks has been pretty. Pretty amazing six weeks to have Catherine aboard because she comes to us uh, with the experience that she's mentioned. But right, I'm hearing all that. What what I haven't been able to do, quite honestly, is get out of the operational game. The last two years have have been me trying to put it together because it was a complete mess when yes, you got it. Yes, it ma'am. Really so was. Uh, I, you know, with the help of everyone here uh, and newest members, Catherine. Now we're in a position where we can better manage uh, more transparently uh, all of the engagement stuff that we have to do daily, internally and externally, but we can be more into that program arena. We can do the things with Catherine that I, ha I don't, I can't, haven't been able to get to. So with direct support that goes to the whole of community recreation, all of aquatics, the food program, community enrichment, and Mellon Tennis, almost everything that isn't senior center and those things that tie into those trust funds, to have someone like Catherine here only amplifies what we're able to do. So this was a position that was put in 2019's budget, this current budget, but we only recently hired Catherine. It took almost all year to get through uh, pointing Luann and then bringing Catherine on board. So I, oh, please, please. Jump. Oh, no, no, I don't want to. No, please. Um, I was just going to say, well, and what I'm excited about, particularly having been able to go out to the different rec centers, and I've been taking notes on the particular rec concerns that you guys have mentioned, um, you know, really looking at what, when, peop when people sign up for a city parks or city of Pittsburgh program, what, is, what does that look like and how does it responsive to the community and also responsive to best practices and how we should be working with young people and like our summer camp coming up. There's a lot of opportunity to do some really cool things with that, um, making sure that everybody who's on staff feels like they're supported in the work that they're doing, that they have the right kind of professional development and training to be doing that work. Those sorts of things are things that I'm hoping to, to make sure, um, you know, on the ground is happening. I mean, even as supporting our program supervisors. I'm learning, you know, there's there's things that will happen here and the, making sure that we have a streamlined communication out to all these different places where community facing work is happening. Um, that seems to be something that's gonna be, a, you know, a big part of my role. And and I, I'm, I've been excited about a lot of the potential that's there. There's really awesome people, really awesome people doing this work and really great things that are happening in, in the various rec centers um, and so I think that you know what I'm bringing is um, a lens of you know how do we take what we know we're doing well and really bring that up to um, you know the next place mm -hmm. and the other thing that we haven't mentioned but the rec to tech initiative is going to be a big thing to happen in our centers it has a lot of potential <clears throat> to amplify youth programs but also making sure that our folks on the ground feel just as ready and prepared to do that work I think is going to be a really important piece of how that also rolls out okay and I would hope that you know just hearing this on the news last night that anyone working with children have clearances. Oh, definitely. Definitely yes. have clearances. That's her departmental policy. Right. Yeah. It has been for long before I got the parks. Yes. Okay. I just <clears throat> wanted to make but sure. But even my, on my first day, our first meeting, clearances were like one of the first things we talked about in, in terms of staffing. So I know it's a critical piece of safety for sure. Right. And, and I just can't say enough about making sure janitors in the building, anybody in the building, with kids sure. should have their clearances. If not, they can work somewhere with adults or, mm -hmm. but not seniors. 
Right. Because you really have to watch with the seniors also. Mm -hmm. we, we make sure there's clearances for our seniors as yes. well. Yes. Yeah, that's and, part of it And as well. I know how you are, mm -hmm. so I didn't mm -hmm. have to ask that question. <laughs> hey, yeah, you have and, to ask. and I know you mm -hmm. very well, too. Yes, Thank God we have you now. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, and yeah, that is true it's with true Ross. for the whole wonderful. department. Um, and you do have a, a wonderful department, Thank you. and um, uh, you watch how you're spending the money. I'm wondering how the RAD Fund actually, uh, how it comes out to 84607 um, dollars. I'm, do we just get the pot of rad money and you're given so much? Where are you looking at, Councilwoman? On the back. Under the trust fund? I guess it's the back, yes. For the rad. Oh, the reimbursement is right here. Oh, that's just a, that's a reimbursement of um, that we pay from the rad trust fund into the general fund. That's something different. Uh, what we have on that, that's. Um, money that we owe for benefits into the general fund from the rad trust fund that's um okay so that's what, what do that we is. take out so what we 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 reimburse the general fund for employees from the rad trust fund that's what that piece represents we haven't and it just goes into the general fund it doesn't go back into your programs right so you know, that's a reimbursement for yeah. benefits so the annual rad monies mm -hmm. that we receive i guess alongside of public works i'm not sure whom else might receive mm -hmm. them ours are yes. kind of specific to programming and those those things are not so um, capital related like public works is um, rad monies might be but w there's a personnel cost and for rad so that's that reimbursement piece that Lou okay. mentioned. So in addition to anything that we may do programmatically in a RAD mm -hmm. park or activate with those RAD monies, there are operational costs that are personnel related. Okay. <coughs> and then the uh, summer food program, mm -hmm. that's done with Pittsburgh Public Schools. So they're the primary sponsor yeah. vendor for us. So that right now it's right. our after school program and in the summer I, it's our summer food program. I when, think when you talk about the food programs and talk about uh, the cities, the largest, you have to put the Pittsburgh Public Schools in with well, that sure. because that's really where the money comes or where the food mm -hmm. comes from. Yes. And um, are we reimbursing them some money here or? They reimburse us. Okay. Yes, so the money comes from basically the federal government through the, right. not weirdly through the Department of Education mm -hmm. and then it trickles down through the public schools for us. So it's a it's a pretty lean operation in how we run it. There's not a lot of money in that trust fund every year right. and it really ramps up in the summer. I think uh, Carly Gedman, the program uh, supervisor, there might have been 130,000 meals and snacks served this past summer. So there's quite an impact, 80 plus food sites. So we're just one provider for that program as, as Catherine indicated, but it's a really, really important, we're looking to amplify that too. But um, yes, there are monies that are afforded to us via pub, the public school system that make it possible. Right. <clears throat> and, we also, and it's always we also, good to sort of, mm -hmm. you know, let people know that because I don't know if people really know that that comes mm -hmm. from the Pittsburgh Public Schools yes. and then the funding is federal, so mm -hmm. we are yes, reimbursed it's a for long standing, staff. Correct, a long-standing relationship. I don't know how many years, but it's decades. It's years and years yes, and decades, years and right. years and right. years, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they take care of any of our children, or yes. they come that. Uh, it's a great program. I mm -hmm. thank you. Just can't say enough about it. Yeah. Um, are the um, uh, crossing guards still working with that program too? No, no. they yes. work within the program. They're PPS employees, or well, with the, well there the are employees, guards. but mm -hmm. oh, they support PPS. The yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the summer, they come and work for us. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're in with the pools as well. Yes. Yeah, we right. did a lot of the summer, mm -hmm. the summer PPS staff that help mm -hmm. aquatics, that help the food program, and they've been committed to doing it, mm -hmm. even based on what we're able to pay, and they and they make a difference in the delivery of those services every mm -hmm. year. And 
Who's your pools? Pools? Pools. Yeah, well, we're all pools, but Catherine, I guess, is technically yeah. pools. Okay. I mean, Shelly Turlecki is the pool yeah. guru, but... Yeah. Right, but... Yeah. We, we, yes, ma'am. We'll help here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the one issue that, that I've been having, and <laughs> I've been chasing them back, and I just thought of it, um, is the Sue Murray pool, and I don't <laughs> think any other council member is having the same issue. My son used to be a little partner. But yeah, the cool. SEA uh, uh, tries to get rid of the, um, the geese. The geese. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma and <laughs> they, they chase yeah. the geese up to Sue Murray Pool. Yeah. And each morning, your people are out there. Have to, you should see. I mean, I don't know if you've been up there like... After a night's worth of it. the geese, I haven't seen that. Yeah. But the water has changed; actually, changes color, mm -hmm. and they're still there. Mm -hmm. So what we've had is some volunteers that have some dogs to chase them right back down, mm -hmm. and this is what has just been going on yeah. constantly. Yeah. So I really think you need to have a talk uh, with SEA about that because mm -hmm. if you're going to chase the geese, you chase mm -hmm. them down the river, mm -hmm. okay? But you don't chase them up into a swimming pool that children are okay. swimming in. Certainly. And I mean, you should have seen the concrete and your people. Yeah, seen it. They're wonderful. They they are the they best. were working their rear ends off, and they would not open up until <laughs> they could get that water clear. Yes, but you it, can't it's open just, before exactly. It's it's very sad, and you just can't keep doing that. They keep moving them up there and up to uh, Lake Elizabeth. Mm. And now they're starting to cross the street and get up into where the homes are. Sure. But um, it's it's really bad, and and I'd hate to have to have something happen with the swimming pool just sure. because somebody has their dogs chasing them right. from from down on North Shore up to the neighborhoods. They need to be chasing them down the river. Thank you for bringing but, that up, Councilman. But, Thank you. but that's a note, and and I watch. I, I mean, I watched them. I I went in this. I, the water was actually discolored mm -hmm. every morning, every morning from chasing the geese. I'm it's only to... one time a year that that happens. Right, happens. right. Usually later in the season. I right. think that they're not allowed to chase them before. I thought that. they found some kind of sound or something to play to chase them out. I, I think Shelley was talking to me about that. I'll, I'm going to double check with her and see. Yeah, but they shouldn't have to be there in the first she, place. They shouldn't huh? be there in the, in the first, first place. place. They haven't been Great. there. Whoever has the dogs needs to send them where they sent them before. Um, but that is, I mean, that could cost us a lot of money to just keep putting in the one swimming pool. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know there were a couple people that were upset when they seen a dog in the water. I says, well, come on in and see why we have the dog run up there. And they're volunteer dogs mm -hmm. that have been helping us. And I just want to thank them for their listening to the program out there. But, um. Uh, I don't have much more. I don't think I have anything else for you. No, I think that we could always come That's back it. to you. Yeah. No, we can't. <laughs> I have a director waiting over. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Is that the only reason you're here? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh. I figure why do I show up here and over here asking the questions? Go ahead. Okay. Um, well, thank you for being here still. I just, um, I don't want to repeat anything that's already said. I actually was in a meeting about a rec center or community center that um, one of our churches wants to, mm. wants to build. Um, and so just trying to understand what they were trying to do. Uh, but, I, but we also are working with Joey Porter in our area because we don't have a rec center um, in our area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have Ream Rec, which we was closed and we opened. I, st I go through this every year, but we mm -hmm. have a 
and we're trying and a commitment from the mayor to work with us to get a center open so mm -hmm. i think that we will have something um soon i just don't know how soon uh but i do want to say that i have some concerns we, we have the rec to tech program and i think you did something in langley um and or you were doing something in langley and that's so difficult for people to access so i really hope that we would consider maybe doing some adult programs um and not just recreation shouldn't just be sure. the young kids i mean we have a lot of adults uh, young adults and especially coding classes as we're preparing our workforce and our young people for the future i wish we would offer that free some free classes in hours where young adults who have to work might mm -hmm. be able to attend in the evening yes. for an hour or two so it's not so daunting uh for them to learn but it actually creates an opportunity instead of another obstacle um so i, I and I, I mentioned that last year so i mentioned it again this year i'd really like to see that you know us move forward on some of that um and i want to acknowledge um Flo, who also does the food program. <laughs> and yes. I want to say, I mean, she's working part-time, correct? She's, she's full-time. Full she's full-time now? Yes, ma'am. full-time. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she gets, uh, tell me how many years does she have to be there before she can? Uh, she has it has eight years before you get into pension. And how many pension. does she have? Do uh, well, she has a lot of years part-time. Um, I'm trying to think yeah. how many years part-time. I want to know if there's she have to She doesn't around. have enough to get she her She might invested. only have two or three full-time. Because she's been in um, the previous director was here she became full-time he made her administrator okay. so i just really want to talk about how we can help flip because how old i mean i don't want to say how old she she's she's a little she's bit older than me i'll say a bit older a little she may have kids older. that are older than i am but uh -huh, i'll say that safe. um she's fed kids across the city for a very long time and i feel mm. like we owe her absolutely some kind of we, we feel gratitude. the same way about flow and so we i just flow. really like to make sure if there's something i can do to help with that okay. in the budget or something okay. we need to councilwoman harris can talk to the pension office or something we need to do please let us okay. know because i do feel like she has done a lot for this for this we feel area. the same way about flow we feel very endearing to flow for her service all the years of service yeah she's mm -hmm. just amazing yes and she is and I really want to say that our Sheridan senior, there's happy with the director that's there now. Yes. I don't know who that is. And so I want to put in a good word in for, I can't David remember. David Snyderman? Yes, they love David. him. Yeah, I know. They, they really and Pat Freeze, of course, they love They love Pat. Pat. Yes, and David. Mm -hmm. they, they love all our center directors in our side of town. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they love them right now. But good, right, they good. were having trouble. We were having some trouble in Sheridan, and they just told me that they just love this person. Okay. I've been going up there trying to work with them a little bit, and um well, yeah, David's been good. They told so me I told they him like I put him. a word in for him. So I'm oh, putting the word in publicly so they know okay, I did it. Okay, very so. good. That's okay. good news. Um, good. And then I just really want to ask a few questions about the, I, I understand we're having a difficult time keeping crossing or keeping uh, lifeguards. And somebody had said that now a kid could go and get a job making $15 an hour or whatever so at one of the fast food places or someplace like that they said, mm -hmm. they mentioned. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the kids are doing, that they're not lifeguarding because the money, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the time, the training, oh. all that stuff. And I wonder what you're doing. Was that already addressed? Because if it was, no, tell we me didn't now, because I won't go down it. Yeah, the no, yeah I, the last, was it this year? Is it 20, 29th, early? I think it was earlier this year. Was it 2018? There was a modest adjustment per, yeah. per life rate, guards. per lifeguard mm -hmm. kind of tier, because you're tiered. If you come in more experienced, you could make mm -hmm. over $15 an hour. Okay. So there was an adjustment to try to catch us up to where I think what the mm -hmm. county pays their lifeguards, yep. which is a little bit more. But uh, for the last several years, there's been a, a, a strain with recruiting, recruiting and retention. Right. I think it's a little bit, it goes beyond just what we pay. Um, sometimes we, Shelley will recruit. We just have a hard time retaining them, or we can only retain them for a certain period in the summertime, and they're off to school earlier. So we did some, we tried some creative marketing last year. Uh, the team attended a number of job fairs. We're going to do the same this year. They get the word out everywhere. So the kind of the active recruitment campaign starts and starts now, really to get the word out. But it's been an issue for us. It's been hard, and it seems to get harder every year. And no one can really identify what specifically. If we paid more, I'm I'm sure. I mean, we would we could capture more. Um, so I think when I you know, when my kids were younger, the lifeguards were teachers in the summertime sure. who had off all summer, mm -hmm. and so they looked for summertime work, and so that was a way that they were filled. But the jobs were filled. But I guess that pay now is doesn't even come we close do, to. We do get some. Uh, I, I don't know if you were at the table, yet, but we get some um, public school workers that help us out in the summer, and they have for years with Shelley. I mean, okay. they're, so they do do that, and they do it at the rates that we pay 
Could we get more? Sure we could. So sure I'd really could. like to make sure I have some conversations about the pools in my area because I be actually got complaints this year, which I usually don't. But the year before, I got a couple, and then this year it was a lot more. Okay. And so I'd like Respective to, to... There was a lot of stuff. And then when I talked to Shelly, she put like a little bit, you know, she shed a lot of light okay. on some of those okay. concerns. Okay. So I'll just, I just think that I'd like to have some conversations sure. about those. And in, in, in my senior centers, I'd like to talk about too. Okay. Um, okay. So maybe I'll schedule a meeting with you, with you for all that's that. But I want to cool. mention that I think that this is an awesome team. Thank you. I think you, you two have been doing a, a wonderful job I mean amazing you've carried this department for a very long time on a shoestring Thank and uh, you, you coming on board was really really I uh, gave a lot yeah. of trust to the air to the to the department that I Thank think you. people felt really good about I agree with you. yeah and but having Catherine here I worked with her and I've seen her long before anybody t mentioned her with the United Way before anybody mentioned her here in the city and I've seen firsthand the work that she does I mean amazing she is amazing so i think together that you'll be the, such a, an amazing trio and that uh, our kids and our communities and our seniors and everyone can will definitely benefit so i'm looking forward to working with all three of you thank again, you very sure. much thank, thank, you. You. thank you thank you welcome aboard thank you. Thank you. it was one of the most exciting times i was like oh my god they hired somebody today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we felt the same way i was, we so, were happy. Like, <laughs> I was so happy thank before, you before i turn it over to councilwoman gross again i just wanted to add one thing it's taken me two years to lose the senior center lingo uh, you two are <laughs> converting me back <laughs> it's always been a senior center to me but it is a healthy active living living center i just got it last week and you two are I will, say, I will say this, which well, is a lot of people who know it, even the young people, they still refer to it as the senior center. Because when too. I say, I'll say Hacti Healthy Active Living Center on my emails or whatever, and they're like, where is that? Sure. Like the senior center. Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. Right, right. Uh -huh. so. yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, Councilwoman Gross. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize something that we kind of only, you've mentioned several times separately, but the, the substantial work that you all do around food is so important to so many people in our district and it's so important to, to every council district I think so I just wanted to read out of the budget again I'm on page 288 78,758 meals at the healthy active living centers in 2019 and that's really important to know I've been with discussions even with food ag activists with people who you know, spend their days thinking about food scarcity. Who didn't realize that? Um, and that, I mean, it was like, it was amazing that, it, again, someone who was very concerned and wanting the city to do more around food justice and food scarcity and what can we do because people are hungry. And I said, like, well, you know, well, the first thing that we do that is the biggest expenditure at the meals at the senior centers, healthy active living centers. And that person didn't know that. So I just wanted to make sure that the people understand that that's, Five days a week, generally. Five Not days a week. That's five correct. Days a and week. Supported and by the area agency on aging, Allegheny County. They provide the meals. Yes. For the so program, so it's a, it's an amazing thing. And it's a robust distribution network. Yes. That we have um, these centers. Maybe not as close as people would want them. Bluefield mm -hmm. still wants a, a center back, as I mentioned before, um, but really fairly conveniently located, accessible to seniors throughout the city, um, which is amazing. And then the other one is the summer program, which you also mentioned briefly, that on top of that, that 130,000 grub up free, free, again, no cost summer meals and snacks were served to city youth at, I think you said 80 sites, and I added that in my notes as well. It's really nice. impressive, and it really speaks to, I think, how you're out there and meeting the needs. I've uh, begun to do research and talk about gender-based budgeting, mm. which some countries are doing. Mm. And um, as, as part of my work on the Gender Equity Commission, trying to get that commission to add capacity to advise us on the gendered and <clears throat> intersectional impact <clears throat> of the these kinds of budget decisions that we make. And I think that's just a really perfect example. We know that we have a substantial percentage of our population that's needy, some 30%. And we also know that 70% of that population are female-headed households with children, mm -hmm. right? So we're talking about children who are in need and have, you know, concretely what are the needs that they have and how are we meeting those needs through our budgeting. So I just wanted to emphasize that and say thank you, thank um, you for Councilman. all that you do. And again, 
Your budget being only just over $3 million, adding benefits being just close to $4 million, you're doing a lot. And I think many council people would love to see even more programming. So just putting that out there. Thank working, you. We're working on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate that. And, you know, I just have a couple of things yeah. real quickly. Um, the, the spray parks. What's the life expectancy? I mean, so they're, how expensive are they, first of all? Can you, can you tell me that? Well, I think I, I, you'd have to talk to someone in facilities, but I, I think the average spray park, if it's a pool conversion, was mm -hmm. a pool, right. mm -hmm. uh, might have been closed during Act 47 or whatever, to reopen it and turn it into a spray park, uh, maybe a million dollars. That's just so a million ballpark. dollars. So we, obviously we have plumbing besides the features you know but that's uh, so that's er that's everything it's really the plumbing everything it's all costs that's all costs. dollars yeah how long are we ex they expected to last any ideas uh, i mean plumbing underground it could go 50 years just like I, our plumbing right i don't i don't see that there's a real timeline as to as to when they might become maintenance expensive or intensive they're a little bit different in pools there's zero depth there's not, there's not all the hygiene. There's not the rigorous reporting that has to happen via Allegheny County. So provided that the infrastructure is pretty good, that's been in place and, and part of the build out of it, it could last, for, they could last for quite some time. Yeah, yeah we've so. got one in Beachview. They, they love it. They yeah. really do. Yeah. So, so we don't really know the life expectancy. I don't. Yeah, yeah, sure. so, I don't. Right. <clears throat> so um, the other thing is with, and I know we can't project where the new tax money is going to go. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. I'm planning an indoor arena with heated seats in Brookline, all right? With a, <laughs> because this money is just going to keep on coming, you know, mm. providing I get my share. Right? <laughs> right. But, um, right. yeah, I'm joking, of course. But, uh, and and one, one last thing, Director. Um, the PHDC moving yeah. into yeah. above us. Uh, yeah. Is that in your purview? I know it's well, a city-owned building, just, but just I know you a, were in on the talks. You just know? had a couple of meetings uh, yeah. yesterday and today and just left Chief, uh, Chief Casey to, before I came here. It looks like the event will happen without an, a hitch tomorrow evening. We've worked it out <laughs> to facilitate the whole of the center. I wasn't even open. thinking that, but I'm glad you worked that out. Yes, I did sir. get that call a couple of days so ago. So we, okay, we, okay. that's all fine. The whole center will be open. up. We have staff for the senior yeah. center so people can look at the whole facility and not just the the new space that the Gamer has. So, um, and I think it's expected that uh, by Friday they'll be able to occupy the space. That's yeah, the so conversation. So we've ribbon, ribbon cutting tomorrow. Ribbon cutting tomorrow yeah, at 5.30, yeah. that's my understanding. Yeah, so I'll make an yeah. appearance there. Yeah, but I, work, I worked with Guillermo a little bit yesterday. Yeah, we yeah, met with him. And yeah, that's great. And that's gonna be uh, very welcoming in, in that neighborhood. Yes, I think yes. we need some foot traffic and it'll provide that along with some other things. Uh, that's it for me. Um, any Buddy, I'll say the councilwoman. No, there's council, nobody. Councilwoman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot to ask you about the um, entry. Did we? Are we charging oh, seniors for their dinners now? Their lunches? No, no. ma'am. No, That's they could free. put something in the donation, donation box, but they don't have to. Okay, because yeah, no okay, because when we had Miss Doozy. Mm. Um, it was like it was a mandatory thing. And I just no. wanted donation. to make no, sure. Just a donation. There's a box there. If they want to put something in the box, they can, but there's no requirement uh -huh. made to put because anything Because we in. get money back. Mm -hmm. well, we're, we get, we're funded by the county. Right. right. Um, we don't get money back, but we're funded. Yeah, so and, and, you know, that we follow. There's a, there's a lot of strict guidelines around the whole structure of the program. And, you know, Luann has quite a bit of work that she manages respective to that. But right. the, the contract uh, stipulates how we manage that, but we do not charge. But we that. also have um, residents from the county that come to our senior centers also. I, I, I yep. don't, I would I think. On the street. Yeah, we, we, no, I mean, I, I, I talk to them. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just signed up. Remember the woman that came to visit from out of We've signed her up. She was visiting yeah. her daughter and wanted uh, to come for and this a visit is, for two weeks. This has know? been always. Ongoing. Yeah. Okay. Excuse uh -huh. me. One second. I'm sorry. Are you to be a resident of the city to actually use the healthy health and wellness? No, I didn't no, think so. It's, no, it's, uh, it's yeah, been ongoing. Yeah, that's what I just where did. Where? Mm -hmm. You have to be a resident of the county. 
just had a woman come in from thought, No real strict rules on it. I think that's the way it should I think be. You yeah, yeah, I thought it was. You just could just sign up sure. as a member. Oh, you you log into a you, system you and you select from, what you want to do, what activities do you want to eat. Right. You can come from Newcastle if you want. You know, and, right. and really, we want participation. We're not going to turn you away. The Beachview yeah. Center, yes, you know, we, we're Absolutely. looking for people. We're trying to encourage we'll them to get out. So. Absolutely. Bill just said to me, we don't turn people away. No. No, I don't. I don't ever remember turning we someone do. away, and actually, they're in the age really nice people that have been there. Oh, we're for we're a trying while. to get them as young as me. I mean, actually. I mean, the age to actually. <laughs> to me, be going to sixty <laughs> qualify? Yes, 60. I qualify. Sixty, mm -hmm. 60, 60 years old? 60. Oh, we're just kids, Deb. We got a long time away. We welcome anybody, and even those under 60. You just right? may not you be able to have the lunch that's provided the lunch. by the. I've by snuck the into a lot of places underage yeah. okay. before, but yeah. never a healthy wellness. Center. <laughs> still my <buying> floor. <laughs> I still have the floor here. Um, the uh, seniors money was. There was an incident that happened at one of the. Uh, was not a senior center? It was a. Um, a rec center mm. and they decided to take all the seniors money and put it in one account oh mm. uh, yes, yes where yeah. is that i mean is that their money anywhere? their money goes back into all the senior money goes into the senior trust fund their well, money you're speaking right? about the advisory and they have their, individually yes. so each, oh, no they have yeah. their yeah. Oh, they still have their advisory numbers. council money. That money is go to their advisory councils. Their so, permit money goes when they have permit money. But no, no, going off um, the, so the money that they raise themselves. Yes. So mm -hmm. that Lou just, uh, Lou Ann just um, yesterday yeah. was the annual senior advisory council orientation where each center has its own advisory council members. There's right. a treasurer and a president. Some of them are ongoing members. Sorry, I'm not talking to the microphone. Some of them might be new members. So they get oriented and trained. And that event happened yesterday. Um, they are kind of the fiscal agents of their own money. So every advice. So their money went back to them? Yes, ma'am. They manage their Thank own goodness. accounts. Yes. Because I thought that was no, so unfair the yes, city to take. No. Their money that they it's raised. Their money. Uh, not in their case. They and manage their own bank accounts. Those... They do that. That's their money. Right. We don't. They right. sign to go to right. the bank and do whatever they. Yeah. Okay. The permit money goes into the trust fund for them to use. Mm -hmm. But the okay. advisory because at their centers go to the centers. Stays okay. at their centers. Yes, because it. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. I don't. It got a little I do know how there that happened. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. yeah. It's a shame that it did, but I'm glad it got back down yes, to normal because, you know, if they want something, they can write a check and get it. That's right. That's right. I That's mean, really a great collective decision making. I've seen the enthusiasm right. at the centers when they've been fundraising sure. for something that they've decided that they're, mm -hmm. in, you know, doing together. I mean, it's like fundraising for events and things like that. Uh, yeah, they just had recently had their big, they had, for the first time, they had this huge super bingo. Um, for all the centers they had at a restaurant, and uh, it was so well attended. They raised a lot of money. They raised enough money to pay for almost all of their Christmas party this year by having that super so bingo. Nice. They yeah. loved it. They really enjoyed right. themselves. I, actually, I think next year we have to find a bigger um, restaurant to have this um, uh -huh. bingo place for them. They really enjoyed themselves. Yeah. And it was their money when it started That's going, mm -hmm. and that was wrong. Yes. But I'm glad you righted that wrong. Thank you oh, yes, very much. <laughs> okay, that's all I had. Just one last thing. Sure. We have so much interest in multi generational programming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know that you just said there's a lot of like rules and regulations and conditions that you have to do yeah. around the healthy active living centers, but there are these wonderful models that I keep, you know, noticing and constituents keep bring up to me about, for example, children's programming and senior programming. Um, being interactive or being in the same place. I personally, and council, other council members may as well, I have a lot of retired people who are caregivers for their That's grandchildren. Right. Mm -hmm. sure. And so they can't go to the, they're like, I wish I would love to go to Morningside, but mm -hmm. I have my kid, I got my grandkids with right. me. Right. So I almost feel like if there's some way programmatically that even once a week or once a month, it would, it's almost like a bring your kid to work day, but it's yes. a bring. Yes. Bring your bring your care 
you know, person dependent um, mm-hmm. with you to the lunch or We're something talking, like that. Yeah, we've talked about trying to get programs like that to get them on their monthly calendars mm-hmm. and schedule something where they could do that. Because, you know, they're mm-hmm. like trying to figure out where the other reading mm-hmm. times are. I know you have the reading times, but here are these, again, retirees, mm-hmm. grandparents mm-hmm. who are, you know, got the kids all day Absolutely. and are really looking for an outlet to, you know, like we all do when we're giving, you know, taking care of kids. Where's the story time at the library or where's Absolutely, the yeah. Yeah, train table at the wherever place? Yeah. And we're not right now. We have our um, at the market house. We're advertising. We're doing our ceramics. We're getting that up and running. So we are offering in the evening a ceramic program oh, classes at the market house, outside market house. Um, yeah, we've we had, That's fun. We just put that online, um, offering that program and some um, also some craft um, art program also also in the evening um, mm-hmm. we're going to do it at the market house now that we have it all remodeled and the rooms back up and running and the kilns will be online shortly so that's yeah, on do the ceramics so have their own kiln we yeah we have four kilns there, there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. and they do that at homewood as well homewood senior center has it <clears throat> they have a great guy there who they do we'll ceramics you, with i'm gonna make you something for Christmas. Yeah. Uh, huh? Huh? I need Christmas Teddy bear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Good, thank you. All good. Councilwoman Kelsey thank Smith, you good. Yeah, thank you. So we are going to, well, first of all, thank you, Director thank you, Catherine. Thank, thank you, Lou. Thank, thank you, welcome. Bill. Thank, thank you for you know, helping me through. Um, we are not adjourning. We are turning it over to Is Councilwoman Kelsey Smith. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your work. Catherine, I'm so excited. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, thank you so much. Oh, great. Okay, thank you so much. Go here and cheer. (laughs) Hey, I don't have to move a pillow from him when he sits, gets up. Yeah, well, certainly isn't mine. I got my own, I carry around with me. Okay, wait, did we start? <laughs> did we start? Is this still on? The camera on? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, the camera's still on. We're still on. Jeez. Anthony, get me in trouble. <laughs> Director, you want to come up? Do you want to come up? Cut that, David. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one, two, two. <laughs> I got a clicker. You don't have to move. Wow. It's all ready to go, man. I actually read the. Uh, you can probably skip over the most of the intro. And we'll continue with our uh, city council, Pittsburgh City Council budget hearings. Uh, I'm Councilwoman Teresa Kelsmith, the chair of the Department of Public Works, which um, the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure falls under and environmental services and some others. So we'll, we'll talk about that, uh, those budgets, but we're going to begin with our director and the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure. And we'll have some words from our budget director, from City Council's budget director, opening statements, and then we'll hear from the director and her staff, so. Uh, we'll d- just a quick summary. Uh, the, uh, the mission of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure is to provide the physical mobility to support the social and economic mobility of the citizens of the city through the management, design, improvement, and operation of the public streets rights of way. Um, the Department of Mobility Infrastructure is responsible for all aspects of transportation and, and uh, city provided mobility services. Uh, DOMI is responsible for 1,060 lineal miles of streets, that's 890 miles of asphalt, 90 miles of concrete, 80 miles of brick and block stone. Uh, 2,423 lane miles of streets, 2,000 of asphalt, uh, 206 of concrete, 183 of brick block stone, 675 sets of steps covering 23.3 lineal miles, 44,000 street lighting fixtures, 850,000 street signs, and uh, 33 miles of uh, guide rail. Um, The budgetary uh, changes today, Total budget of uh, uh, DOMI, we'll use the acronym there, is uh, 
$8,534,000. That's an increase of $573,000 or 7% and a $2.4 million, 39% increase from the 2018 budget. Um, this is due to some of the transition between uh, taking responsibility from public works and moving it over to, uh, uh, to this uh, department. Uh, total full-time positions, 97, as well as funding for seasonal positions, an increase of two. Position and salary changes of note, there's an added senior manager rights of way, uh, $88,351, reduced as senior project managers from two to one, that's an $85,000 savings. Uh, reduced utility and right of way supervisors from two to one, $75,000 decrease. Uh, increased project managers from three to six at $78,520 each. Increased project engineers from three to four, $66,464 um, increase. Uh, reduced staff engineer uh, from six to five, uh, that's a savings of $58,000. Uh, reduced inspector twos from five to four, savings of 49,000, and an added senior systems analyst uh, three, uh, increase of uh, $66,464. The eliminated draft technician two at $41,060, eliminated traffic control foreman at $59,585, added two senior planners, uh, $60,930 each, and reduce principal planners from three to two, $63,887. Department of Mobility Infrastructure's non-salary subclasses changed across eight lines for a total increase of $25,000 or 3.5%. Changes included tolls uh, increased by 50,000, operational supplies decreased by 20, uh, administrative fees increased by 20, um, Machinery and equipment decreased by $15,000. Transportation for employees decreased by $7,200. Regulatory increased by $1,000. Building systems decreased by uh, $1,000. And promotional uh, decreased by $1,000. Domi has two grant funded positions. The Hillman Foundation has funded a transportation fellow uh, data. And uh, the Heinz Foundation has funded a policy analyst. Uh, Department of Mobility Infrastructure has no trust funds. However, the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure is responsible for a majority of our uh, capital budget. Um, I have uh, detailed here with the help of Mr. Strelick uh, the uh, major line items, uh, and I will go through those as quickly as possible. Um, 28th Street Bridge, which uh, is part of the uh, TIP program, uh, advanced uh, which uh, total for 2020 is gonna be uh, $250,000. Uh, advanced transportation and congestion, uh, management technologies and development, uh, three point, approximately $3.5 uh, million, um, all from bond dollars. Uh, bridge upgrades, uh, we will get a match on those. We'll spend 2.4 ourselves, 1.8 for a total of about $4.2 million. Uh, complete streets, uh, there's 200,000 in CDBG, uh, 4.8 million in bond, 1.2 million in PAYGO, uh, matched by $13.5 million. Uh, total uh, investment for complete streets will be $19,732. Uh, design, construction, and inspection service, uh, $244,000 listed under other. Um, flex beam and uh, fencing, $50,000 from bond dollars. Uh, flood control projects, $70,000. Larmer Bridge, which is a, uh, part of the TIP program, will be $40,000 in bond, matched by $760,000 for a total of $800,000 for the Larmer Bridge project. This phase, uh, Liberty Avenue, HSIP, $55,000, uh, matched with uh, $220,000 for a total of $275,000 for Larmer Bridge. Uh, I'm sorry, that was for uh, Liberty Avenue. Uh, Penn Avenue reconstruction, phase two of that TIP program, $10,000 uh, in bond, $40,000 in other for a total of $50,000. Penn dot local share um, uh, TIP is $1,086,000 of bond that we need to pay up. Uh, ramp and public sidewalks, $200,000 in community development block grant funds, $400,000 in bond for a total of $600,000 dedicated towards the sidewalk and ramp program. 
uh, slope failure remediation, uh, $2.1 million. That's all bond dollars. Uh, the next would be South Negley Avenue Bridge, uh, which is also part of the TIP program, $27,500 of bond dollars to be matched by $522,500 for a total of, of uh, $550,000. Uh, Southside Signals, part of the TIP program as well, too, $100,000 in bond, matched by $400,000 in uh, other monies for a total of $500,000. Step Repair and Replacement, $590,000, all bond funds. And then our favored Street Resurfacing, uh, $16,079, uh, which in bond funds and $904,000 in PAYGO uh, operating funds for a total of uh, 16,984,000, close to $17 million uh, for street resurfacing. Uh, Swindell Bridge, the, uh, also part of a TIP program, uh, $340,000 in 2020 in bond dollars, uh, matched by $760,000 for $1.1 million total. Uh, West Ohio Street Bridge, $340,900 in bond, uh, for uh, for that project uh, in 2020. Uh, also, there's projects that <clears throat> aren't funded in 2020, but are included because we do vote on a six-year plan uh, in the 2021 through uh, 2025 <coughs> capital improvement plan. Uh, those include the bus rapid transit, um, the uh, CDBG signals upgrade, which is ongoing, the Charles Anderson bridge tip, the Mon Oakland connector and four mile run, um, trail development uh, projects throughout the uh, rest of the plan. I don't believe there's any in uh, 2020, but this would be for 2021 on. Smithfield Street, uh, part of a TIP program as well too, will be included uh, in 2021 through 2025, as will the uh, Swinburne Bridge uh, through uh, 2021 through 2024. Um, just to mention as well too, there is uh, a bunch, uh, well over 100 uh, deliverables attached, I think 120 or 130 deliverables attached. Uh, instead of listing all those and speaking through those, I figured you'd uh, uh, be able to uh, uh, know most of the ones that you need to speak about. They are also listed in the capital budget as well too. So for folks at home and for my members, if they uh, need to reference a specific deliverable, look at the the larger uh, section here and uh, most likely we will find it in that line item and uh, with that we'll director turn thank over you. to the director thank you bill so if you'll indulge me i have a powerpoint could you, presentation could you oh. both introduce yourselves to the sure. public and then, and then we'll go to your presentation i'm uh, i'm corinne ericks i'm the director of the department of mobility and infrastructure um eric setzler i'm chief engineer for the department Great. So um, I do have a slide, one for each one of those deliverables. So it's just 123 slides that we can go through. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not. I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, they, but will this be available for the public online so that they wanted to see it? Yeah, this, this presentation will be, and as, as I mentioned, uh, the capital budget currently okay. is online, the 2020 proposal, sure the and folks can see okay. it. Well, can I yeah. ask if any of those deliverables are in any of our districts that you know of? And yes, they are. Yeah, They're right. in every district well, of the city. Let's go to my district and see what's going on. Can so you do the, that? So or the no? director, <laughs> I'll go very directly, quickly. Do her presentation. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And yeah, we yeah, are joined by Councilman Gross and Councilman Caulfield. Okay, great. i got to turn this a little bit. Can I do this? Director, please do your presentation. I'll send it to you. Um, no, no, thank you, and, and appreciate it. The um, this is just the second uh, the but second you, you budget year <laughs> um, that the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure uh, will exist. We were, of course, established by an action of council in 2017. 2018 um, was our full uh, first full budget. Uh, the, the year that we're currently in is our second, and then 2020 will be the beginning of our third. So. Um, we have a, a relatively small staff, but they get a lot done um, with our 97 um, staff members. As uh, Bill mentioned, the, the mission of the department is to provide the physical mobility necessary to support the social and economic mobility of the people of Pittsburgh. And uh, we really do believe this. We know that the ability of people to, to move between their homes and places of employment, homes and jobs and schools and, and grocery stores um, is absolutely critical to the health and wellness of our city. Um, transportation also, as you know, is a major contributing factor to uh, environmental um, 
uh, concerns, including uh, climate change and, and stormwater runoff. So um, we take our mission very seriously um, and endeavor to, to do the best that we can by the people of Pittsburgh. Um, we're driven by five goals that we try and come back to on a routine basis in every project that we do. Um, first and foremost, that no one dies or is seriously injured traveling on city streets. Um, we, we have a ways to go uh, in this, as we've seen, um, that we've had some pedestrian and bicycle um, crashes uh, and some fatalities even, even recently. Um, but we endeavor to, to improve as much as we can the safety of the traveling public. Um, and we measure this by, by thinking about are our streets and intersections intuitive to use even by an adolescent child? Would we allow a school-aged child to navigate our streets going to middle school? Um, because if they can do it, we believe that our, uh, our older adults can do it, our persons with disabilities can do it, and every resident of our city can do it. Um, we seek to make sure that every resident can access fresh fruits and vegetables within 20 minutes travel of home and that they don't need a private automobile to do that. Um, we want them to be able to get to groceries and get home before their ice cream melts um, and that this is something that every resident of our city should be able to enjoy. Um, that, uh, that all trips less than one mile are easy and enjoyable to achieve by non-vehicle travel. You might be surprised to learn that 40% of the trips taken in the city of Pittsburgh, 40% uh, of the vehicle trips that are taken in the city are less than one mile. Um, so we, if we can achieve this, we can reduce traffic congestion by 40%, um, something I think that all of us would um, see value in. Um, and, then, and then finally, housing and transportation are two of the largest household costs to our residents. Um, and, and for some communities, actually, transportation, the cost of transportation exceeds the cost of housing. Um, and this is particularly true among those with fixed incomes, um, those uh, that, are, that are in the lower income ranks of our, of our city. And so we do strive to make sure that no household in our city needs to spend more than 45% of their income on housing, transportation, um, and, and energy. And we do know that as housing costs rise, um, it may be a heavier and heavier burden on, on our department to ensure that transportation costs can decrease um, so that we can offset those, those increases in housing costs. And finally, that our streets reflect the values and pride of our city. Our streets make up um, about one-fifth of the land area of our city, and it's where our visitors um, really are, are left with their indelible memory. Um, so the, 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 the documentary or the movie on Mr. Rogers is coming out um, this week, and, and you know, do our streets tell the story of Mr. Rogers or tell the, 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 the character that our city is? And so these are some of the things that my staff comes back to time and time again as we approach our projects and think about what can we do um, to make this city better. Um, just some highlights and, and both looking back and looking forward um, over the past year. Um, we, uh, street resurfacing is a, is a big activity. It's something that touches every uh, district of the city. We've, uh, in coordination with the public utilities who also do, a fair amount of, of utility paving and restoration and all told. Um, this year we've paved over 60 lane miles um, of streets. This is a, a, a high water mark in recent years for the city and so I'm happy to, to see that along with that when we've had that re street resurfacing we do need to bring our um, curb ramps up to um, current code and so we've uh, rebuilt over uh, 1800 curb ramps um, this year as well as part of the street resurfacing program. Concrete brick and blockstone. Um, we've made a major investment uh, in restoring our historic um, roadways. Uh, the, the list is there. I won't go through all of them um, that we have worked on um, throughout the city. Grant Street was perhaps our largest brick and blockstone project that we took on this year. Um, there's more work to do um, in future years on Grant Street, but um, you no longer um, will lose a filling. Um, driving on the segment of, uh, of Grant Street between Ste 7th and uh, Liberty Avenue. Bridge repair is a, is a large budget item for us, um, and we are responsible for 180 bridges of the 400 that are here in the city. Um, we've had significant um, uh, issues with some of our bridges this year where uh, we've seen concrete uh, falling from beneath them. We've seen uh, other issues of concern. And so we've made a major investment in, in 2019. Um, we've invested $1.4 million in just bridge maintenance. So this is not full bridge replacement or, or um, rehabilitation, but just in bridge repair. 
um, 1.4 million next year we'll, we'll add a million dollars more to that and do 2.4 million um, in critical bridge repair um, in addition to that we are uh, uh, underway and, and adding to the major bridge um, project. So uh, McFerrin Street Bridge is already underway. Duck Hollow Bridge um, uh, is under construction. Lowry will uh, see major improvements next year. 28th Street Bridge, McCardle Roadway Bridge, California Street Bridge, um, and then in just the design phase, which is a which uh, is a is a big lift. Um, for the department, uh, two significant bridges, Charles Anderson Bridge and Swinburne Bridge, um, are both in the design phases for future investment. And so this is tens of millions of dollars um, of bridge improvement, much of it coming uh, and with much gratitude from the state and federal resources. Um, to support our bridge project, uh, a new, after 21 years uh, in the works, a new West Ohio Street Bridge will start construction. Um, next year, so that's a six and a half million dollar um, project in, in the councilwoman's district there. Um, we also are responsible for, the, the numbers vary, uh, but between six and eight hundred sets of public steps uh, in the city, so Janila is one of the, the um, sets of steps that we're proud of to have accomplished this year, and as you can see, it's, it's a beautiful set of steps, yeah, a huge difference, and so, and, and really a big difference in quality of life for these residents. Um, that now do that. We, we know that there is a huge backlog um, of steps that, that need improvement in, in all of your districts that are here. Um, and so we're going to con continue to chip away on that and try and make improvements in the steps um, in the coming uh, year to large uh, projects that we'll undertake, the Vista Street Steps and the Fraser Street Steps, among others, that we'll undertake um, this year. Uh, we're still... Vista. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, uh, we are a city of fragile soil, so uh, we do see a significant amount of slide movement. This is something that we we uh, had a record number of landslides in 2018 that we're still um, working our way out of, even while. Um, new slide events uh, continue to occur in the city. Diana Street is just one example of, of several that we uh, have completed this year. So a street that was impassable um, as it had dropped so significantly is now restored as a full street. Um, again, a long list of, of slide mitigation um, that we're working on. List is underway. Ivy Glen has been uh, addressed. Parkwood and Eads Street has continuing work that's needed on there. Um, Ford Avenue Commercial Street will be underway um, in the coming months, um, a long list of continued work um, that we'll, we will address. Um, in addition to uh, bridges and stairs, we have a number of structural sidewalks uh, and other structural elements um, in the city, Mount Washington, perhaps um, you know the, the signature one among them. Um, where we've made investments in uh, repairing the structural sidewalk on Mount Washington. We'll continue that work um, addressing the overlooks and other uh, deferred maintenance. A number of retaining walls, guide rail, and fencing throughout the city um, is part of the work that we do. Uh, flood and stormwater management, again, a critical issue in many of your communities. Um, and so we continue work on streets run, some cleanup work and, and additional design work on sawmill run, four mile run in partnership with the uh, 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 PWSA, uh, Red Oak and Hasten has seen some work, Mooney Road, Gladstone, Vidali, um, and others that we're continuing to address through um, the, uh, the flood project. This year we have a new project that we've, that we've begun, which is really addressing some of the critical sidewalk gaps. Sidewalks are the fundamental building block of everything else in our city, um, and many of our communities that are most in need actually lack um, quality connected and accessible sidewalks. And so we've begun a sidewalk gap program uh, in Homewood and the Hill District, and then we're looking to expand that into the Hazelwood neighborhood um, as a starting point. There's lots of work to do there. Um, just some more signature initiatives to point out in partnership with, with PennDOT. Um, you uh, can now go and see the uh, sort of reimagined uh, Forbes Avenue, which has um, really transformed that um, community with new signals, new bicycle accommodations, um, better line striping and better operations um, 
uh, in the uh, section um, uh, through Oakland. Um, fast on the heels of that, the city has done a tremendous amount of work on East Carson Street with new um, street lights that are on East Carson Street. Um, PennDOT will follow that with about a $14 million investment in new signals um, and pedestrian safety improvements on East Carson Street, and that should begin in the spring. Um, Broadway Avenue is a project that we continue to work on, so we've made some improvements um, in that community for pedestrian safety and placemaking. Um, new public art uh, will be installed um, soon, and then we're continuing work on a public plaza and some other enhancements um, to really address um, the, the uh, Beachview community improvements. Wenzel Carnahan is a, is a project that has been long under design. We'll finally begin uh, construction in the coming year so that we can improve some of the safety and operational improvements on that um, critical regional corridor. Allegheny Circle um, will be converted from a one-way uh, urban renewal rotary um, in that community to a two-way um, community main street. Um, so that will be, again, a, a project that's been under design and development <coughs> for about three years. Um, will finally come to fruition um, in the coming year. Smallman Street, um, sort of, I, I didn't mean to have one for each of you, but I guess I do. Um, well, I did not, I didn't. <laughs> um, so Smallman Street, again, um, a major investment that's but happening in the Strip District. <laughs> Uh, and so that, uh, we're seeing reinvestment in the um, produce terminal building and we'll complement that with um, significant streetscape investments and the creation of a signature plaza um, on this corridor as well. Um, in partnership with the uh, Port Authority of Allegheny County, a major investment um, for the city and the county is the bus rapid transit corridor. Um, that will not go into um, construction in this coming year, but we will continue the design and permitting um, and incremental improvement um, of transit services in between uh, these major destination areas. Um, just some compliments to, I, I have an, a, an incredible team you all, you all know. Um, many of them are in our sign and signal shops and in the paving division. Um, and they're, they're out there every day doing um, tremendous work. Um, 400 miles of line striping has gone down this past year. 3,500 waterborne crosswalks were painted. 400 thermoplastic crosswalks, our first year with our thermoplastic machine, and they've been um, really pushing them out. 2,500 stop bars, 2,000 signs installed, and 2,700 signs um, repaired. So if you, if you see one of our sign and paint specialists, you know, tell them thank you. They do great work every day um, out on the street. <laughs> Um, this was the first year that we've really um, been able to put in the ground traffic calming, and so we have a number of, of communities that now um, have traffic calming of various uh, types. So, <laughs> see, it's something for you again. Uh, I don't want traffic. To <laughs> traffic calming is not all speed humps. I'm obliged to say it also includes uh, pedestrian refuge islands, lane um, modifications. Um, speed humps are one one tool. Um, but we really strive to use the, the right tool in the right place for what the community outcomes are. Um, but we have had now um, nearly a dozen um, uh, places in the community that now we hope are experiencing um, a higher quality of life as we've been able to slow some of the travel speeds and increase safety in their communities. A number of complete streets that we're also pursuing, um, which include road diets and slow streets, um, business districts, um, Again, Broad Street, South Side, uh, Neighborhood Street on Muriel, Chateau Street Road Diet will, will go underway uh, in the coming year. Um, Willow and Hatfield, Lawrenceville, uh, Neighbor Way uh, as a slow street also next year um, will go there. Um, we've done intersection improvements and crossing improvements. Um, this is in the um, uh, Lincoln Lemington community. Um, but throughout the city as well, Millerton at 35, Penn at Sheridan, 5th and Bellafield in partnership with the University of Pittsburgh, Woodward and Merrimack, Davidson and 40th. You know, and some of these I will say are, you know, we're, we're, we're uh, really trying things boldly to um, uh, improve them but, and making adjustments as we need to with the community. Um, again, Can signal I just maintenance. Make a sure. Case, uh, uh, corrections. Mm -hmm. Woodruff and Merrimack. Wood oh, I'm sorry. Woodruff and Merrimack. Had, I, I just want to make sure people understand. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, we'll correct that before it goes No, you out, have a hundred and some pages. I get it. 
<laughs> so uh, signal maintenance, you know, we, we are grateful that uh, we were able to um, add additional traffic uh, control electricians in uh, the 2019 budget. We are now able to run three crews um, for, for keeping our traffic signals uh, up and running. We have 660 signalized intersections across the city and all of them require tweaking at one time or another. Um, this past year, we had 88 signal retiming, seven signal revisions. Um, in addition, uh, uh, this group uh, looks after the Washington Boulevard floodgates and many, many different kinds of service calls and improvements that are needed, knockdowns, crashes um, that occur. Um, we've installed uh, a number of signals. There's more uh, yet to go um, from the 2019 budget um, that we do have a long lead time on some of the signal pools, so they, some of them are trickling over into 2020 for the, the actual install of the signal improvements. Um, we talked earlier about the ATC MTD um, project. This is, an, this is a, a tremendous project. Uh, project to address uh, 123 signals across five corridors of the city to really bring them into a, the, the, the leading state-of-the-art uh, smart signal, both for uh, to facilitate the movement of vehicles through our city, but also to provide for pedestrian and bicycle safety um, and movement uh, in the smartest system in the country. Um, it will be go undergoing design this year and, and construction in 2021. Um, a number of street light projects that we have uh, across the city. So we've completed some, some street light improvements on Highland Avenue, uh, working now on um, Walnut Street, looking at LED uh, street lighting upgrades um, and, and other ways to enhance uh, street lighting in the city. We launched our safe driving pledge. Um, so still encourage uh, folks to sign up for this to do their part to help manage traffic uh, speeds in the city and improve safety um, for everyone. This is really a community-driven effort um, to help manage traffic speeds and preserve safety. Uh, we, In uh, March of this year, we uh, launched the Mayor's Executive Order on Autonomous Vehicle Testing uh, in the city, and, and with that, um, put forward the 10 Pittsburgh principles um, that we've been now really uh, pushing uh, and working with the uh, AV testers in our city to promote uh, outcomes that benefit um, community objectives and community-driven priorities that we have here in the city. Um, we're finalizing the, the bike plan, the city's bike master plan for a 10-year uh, bike plan, uh, and we'll follow on with a series of different uh, implementation of that plan in the coming uh, years for an all-ages and all-abilities network. Um, we're working on a 50-year transportation and mobility vision plan so that we really can put together a strategic program of investments. Transportation projects take a very long time, but we need to know what we want to do before we can actually get the projects underway. And so finally, uh, we'll put together a strategic plan um, that can help guide us uh, as a city that, it, that, that believes very fervently that we are growing and will grow, um, and we need to accommodate those new movements in a way um, that does not compromise community quality of life or the ability to thrive for the residents that we have today. Um, doing a number of um, planning exercises, putting out complete streets design guidelines, working in the different areas of the Strip, the Hill District and Oakland, uh, on uh, area parking management studies and mobility studies um, with the community to get those in order. We'll begin a new Safe Routes to School program um, this year and so working with um, a selection of schools in the area to um, make sure that our students can, can get to their destination safely and, and uh, help push education and enforcement uh, interventions there um, for the student. Um, we do know that there's a range of new mobility types that are coming out throughout um, uh, the country and they will be coming to Pittsburgh. Um, so really looking at the new policies that we need to put in place to know where these new mobility uh, types need to go in our streets and that we're able to proactively handle them so that we're not put uh, in a reactive um, position. We've done a lot of work on improving our right-of-way permitting process. So again, a shout out to the staff at the permit office um, who so far to date have processed over 22,000 permits um, for different activities in the public right-of-way, many of them street openings, utilities, um, development projects. Again, we expect to see more um, in the future, those have uh, yielded $2.5 million in um, revenue, and we've have, uh, now advanced about 60 
um, violations um, so that we can really get um, those who are using and impacting our public rights of way to restore them to the proper quality at the proper time um, that we expect. We're going to an online system in 2020 together with um, our fellow departments at the uh, permits, licensing, and inspection, and the uh, zoning. Um, so that will make it much more convenient for users um, and also provide much, much better data for us to manage um, and enforce uh, the use of our public rights of way. Um, and uh, the two positions that uh, were mentioned that, that will be added will be added expressly to assist with our development review capability. So um, we are seeing more development in the city. That's a good thing, um, but we're seeing increased impatience among the developers uh, at the pace uh, uh, that it takes for us to review their traffic impact statements and review um, their right-of-way plans uh, for restoration of the public right-of-way. So those two positions will allow us to um, stay on top of the uh, development proposals and make sure that they are uh, restoring our city streets. Um, we have a great team. Um, we're, we're, we're small but scrappy, um, and they get a lot done um, together and with partners across uh, the different departments of the city and our, and our partners across um, the county and, and, and the state. And so we're really happy to have them. Um, they're people that need to pull together because we really just never know what's going to be thrown at us. Um, and so I feel it's, it, you have to have the obligatory bus in a hole uh, picture at this point. So um, happy for the support that we've gotten from uh, city council. Um, we've got a lot more work to do in the future um, and, and we're eager to do it. That's it. Thank you so much. And um, Councilman Grosch, you had some comments? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to go. Um, so can, can I also say we're also joined by Council President Kraus? Yeah, I'll spread out, Bruce. You're sorry fine. about that. No, don't, don't you. Um, so I just want to thank Demi uh, firstly for all of the fine work that you've been doing throughout my district, especially. Um, we were very happy to be um, some of the early adopters in the traffic calming on both the speed um, humps in Melwood and, um, and Bloomfield on Edmond Street. And I think I saw the construction crews out today on Heberton. Yes, they were. Yes, so we're very excited. It has been years. Um, and just last night I was meeting with the kind of bike ped of volunteers who are, represent many of the neighborhoods I represent. And they um, were going through lists and, and um, of traffic calming and changes that used to all be turned down. In fact, I have a famous spreadsheet that I emailed the director within like her first days of being in the city where I went back three, I went all the way back to 2014, to the beginning of my term. And, and I had kept track of all the requests because mm -hmm. there are just so many from my district. It was about a hundred, <laughs> hundred line spreadsheet of requests that had been turned down. Can I have a bump out here? Can we have a stop sign there? Can we have a crosswalk? Could you fix the striping? And there wasn't capacity, really. There, I, as Before we created doing, I used to say, there isn't the right door to knock on to get to a yes. We were not staffed and resourced for the amount of demand. So let alone, aside from major development projects and the permitting and all the utility work, this was just coming from residents like residential constituents. So I really appreciate that because you've made nice work of that list. I went back three years deep and a lot of those things got installed and it was like, it was like Christmas had happened. Suddenly the constituents were like, oh my gosh, there's stop signs. We've been asking for this for years and they just magically occurred. So adding the capacity was really an important part of, I think, uh, Mayor Perdue's vision and council um, re spending the resources um, for this new department and director who's done a fantastic job uh, with a lot of pent up demand. I want to emphasize, I, I feel like every year at budget hearings I talk about when, when someone brings up, like you just did at the end of the um, slideshow, major developments, usually it's in the context of the PLI budget hearing and I say we've had so many um, a multi I mean, I, I, I don't know what the multiplier that we're up to is. I want to say it was a 500% increase in permits in PLI. And it, it's, so it's major developments, but then also like individual people fixing up their homes. And similarly, when we're talking about Dermy, Domi, 
it's major developments, but then it's even an individual home wanting a curb cut. One of the things that actually is, there are so many new ones in my district that now they become a problem. Yes. Because you're turning all sidewalks into driveways right. that weren't driveways. And so you're really taking away pedestrian safety yep. and pedestrian space, and as well as parking space, which is a really tough issue in a historic district. So there's just many, many levels of things that we just weren't facing 10 years ago in the city. That demand for regulation, for permitting, wasn't there. For the you know policy making, the analysis, and the impact, and all of that kind of stuff. So thank you for really having a very nice handle on all of it. Um, I I know that I have. There's a. It's you're you're obviously doing a lot. I think some of the things that are most recently on our minds um, that we bring up every year are around utility coordination, and that is now in your purview. And again, before Domi existed, and, and because we just had been coming off of decades of really not having the demand, we really didn't have the capacity. And so we gave our utilities kind of just like open season permits. Do whatever you want, whenever you need. And we barely even knew about it. And that's just not good enough anymore, um, especially as we're kind of rebuilding. It's not maintenance. At this point, we're rebuilding infrastructure. And all of our utilities underground are 100 years old, really. Um, so the gas lines are 100 years old. And you don't want your gas lines not to be replaced, right? You really need them to be replaced. Um, obviously, our water and sewer lines are 100 years old. And so there's both the burden and the opportunity to coordinate that reconstruction at the same time that we have all of the changing needs at surface level um, and changing populations and destinations. So with demographic change, as you mentioned, people, I, I used to say, um, again, before Domi was created, in my district, because we have new and population turnover, there are just new destinations. And so that's why some you know people wanted change on their neighborhood streets. Well, the church that used to be there isn't there anymore, or the school isn't there anymore. Now there's a new school, or there's shops on the main street that weren't there 20 years ago, and now it's a, you know a main street that's reborn, and so now people have different demands, um, and that's the department where um, they're able to go to for these um, selections. There's almost too many things to talk about for a very long double budget hearing here, um, but so let me just focus mostly, I think, on making a plug to my colleagues who don't necessarily have the same demands as my district does, which is um, think about when we talk about our kind of budgeting as a moral document and think about when we talk about budgeting for needs, the beginning of Director Ricks' presentation where she's saying, you know, it's our obligation and our duty to really make sure people can get to the things that they need on a daily basis. And Councilman Coghill likes to make fun of me when I caught them off the cuff one day here, car disadvantaged people. And he was like, you just made that up. What is that? And I said, no, a significant portion of our constituents as city, and certainly my constituents, both old and young, and people have been in my district for four generations who never had a driver's license or never bought a car. Um, family households who don't have cars, um, live in the neighborhoods I represent because they don't need a car, mm -hmm. uh, because there's great bus service, because there's main streets, because they can get to church, they can get to bingo every night of the week, because there's bus routes. Um, and I'm, I'm serious, I had a neighbor who went to bingo every single night. And um, because there's childcare and there's schools and there are destinations, and it's important that we help them get there without a car. And I always like to bring up that um, if we're talking about budgeting to help the, our needier parts of our population, then those we know also are 70% of our neediest households are female-headed households with children. So this way to get to school, to get to get food, I mean, you, you have a family to feed at home. There's a lot more demands to, for logistics for your household. Um, and that we help them to get there. So I am wholeheartedly in favor of the kind of complete streets funding that I see here by the kind of not just paving,
but all the other parts of the infrastructure improvements that we need to do. And it's not just about the 35 year old white guy who has a bicycle. <laughs> it's not just about the you know privileged constituent who has preferences. It is also about people who are trying to get needs um, and, and, and we, it's not our job to make their life harder. I think it's our obligation to make their life easier on a daily basis. That's my soapbox for the afternoon. It's been a long day. I'm going to stop uh, there. I'm not sure about that. There's probably it's a like second my 15th wind soapbox for this day. But, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman, Councilman Cockill. Okay. Um, I'll just go through some of these things quickly. Uh, I, I know you're an avid bike okay. rider because I see you. Right? <laughs> yes, I, yes, I am. So. And I'm not 35. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're much younger than that. We know that. <laughs> so, so, Director Rex. You know, I've been saying, I think throughout the South Hills, it's kind of like, you know, they kind of oppose bike lanes when we were doing, whether it be the Broadway Avenue or Brookline Project. <clears throat> and I kind of got the reputation as not liking bike lanes, and that's not mm -hmm. the case for me. Uh, you know, I do not want bike lanes on our business districts. I just think with the rails there, it's a lot of danger there. But I'm going to throw a challenge out to you, okay? Um, if I can get a bike from Brookline, to downtown Pittsburgh. And I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's very difficult. He can't even get his car down here. I know, I know. Yeah, you see it's all banged up, you're right. But I've talked to Catherine Kellerman about this. I've talked to Rich Fitzgerald about this. <clears throat> There's only one real way, I feel. And I'm not an engineer, Eric, so you know, <laughs> take it for what it's worth. But it's through that Wabash Tunnel. Mm -hmm. If you can get a bike lane through that Wabash Tunnel, you open up everything Bethel, yep. all the way to Bethel Park to Cannonsburg people can ride a bike it's route 51 it's you can't cross fit I mean it's just too dangerous but Wabash Tunnel as you probably know there's a ramp that goes off to the left into a warehouse right below Brashear High School and it takes you right over there and nobody even uses that ramp yep. so in the Wabash Tunnel I don't think many people use the Wabash Tunnel either to tell you the truth oh do you <laughs> so that. that's in my district so well, I'm, gonna say a I'm lot not about saying that. close it to cars and open it to bikes yeah. I think it's big enough because it's only one way in, one way out. I think it's big enough for a car and a bike lane, possibly. I know that's owned by the Port Authority, though, and that's a problem, I guess. Yeah, I'm going to come need. up with something for his district and, now. And I think they're more, you know, about uh, liability than anything with, with dealing with the Port Authority, why they probably won't even entertain that at this point. But I feel... If you can get that Wabash Tunnel, that's only, what, three-tenths of a mile. <clears throat> if you mm -hmm. get a bike lane through there, you'll see me supportive of bike lanes throughout my district, believe it or not, okay? Because that's the challenge. If it's just a matter of putting a bike lane up and down Broadway Avenue and you're just going to Dormont and turning around and coming back, they want a destination. Destination is downtown yep. for, for them, you yep. know? And if they could ride their bike downtown and, you know, go to work actually doing that, that, that would be fantastic. But I just feel like somebody will get killed crossing 51. I don't even know how you would do that. You'd either have to build a bridge or go through the Wabash Tunnel. That's just my thoughts on it, you know, and I just want to clarify that, so. I don't think you better respond. That's my district, so I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I still we, do we, chair we, the committee. We won't respond but except to say uh, uh, this is recorded, so that's I'm grateful for that. Um, yeah. And <laughs> I'm grateful, too, because I can't wait to show it to the residents of Mount Washington, including his committee <laughs> that's, that's man. Okay. Have a fit. Um, no, so. we appreciate that. And, and uh, you know, with some of these uh, emerging types of mobility, I do, I do bike. Um, but but I do have an e-bike, and it makes a, it makes a oh, world of difference right. yeah. um, to be able to right. get up and down um, some of the topography that we have here in the city. And as these modes become um, more available and affordable, um, I do think that we will see um, more residents avail themselves of that. Um, we are in a very uh, uh, fortunate time right now where I think we have sort of unprecedented levels of collaboration going on between the city, the Port Authority, the county, um, as we progress on the bus rapid transit project, as we progress on some of the other priorities. Um, uh, there will of course be a, a, a process before any kind of decision like that uh, was to be made. But the more connections that we can lend, the more ways yes. that we can make this a possibility because um, modes of travel such as, as bicycling are um, extremely affordable. And again, that's an important consideration um, for some of our residents who really, uh, you know, struggle, you know, even to, to, to have a $100 uh, a month, um, 
you know, bus right. fare, right. Um, right. to be able to, to bike for, for $10 a month would, would make a huge difference for many okay. of them. Yeah, I just wanted to be on record in uh, saying I'd like to put a bike lane in Councilwoman Gail Smith's district. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I do have a hammer in my yeah, hand. Just <laughs> the Wenzel Carnahan project you yes. refer to, uh, that's, on, that's on my side. Right, I know it's in your district, but it's on it? Wenzel Carnahan. That's at the bottom. It's both, and that's yeah. adding a turning lane. Mm -hmm. That's uh, yours starts right past the steps. No, no, yeah, your right, district, right. Yeah. No, I know it's your district, but then those steps are we're going to get those steps. We're going to get those there. steps improved as well. Oh, when is that project going to go? Spring. The, the road construction project is scheduled to start December 11th. Wow. Yeah. On. On they're going to the first thing they're going to work on is replacing the bridge on that's Carnahan. Carnahan. Yeah, right. Okay. So that's going to start. The rest will be will follow. Okay, but there will be a continuous and pour over to the other side of the road, and um, those steps they jet out. You could see those steps; yep. they got scrapes all over them. People, you know, hit those all the time. So that's welcome. I, you know, I was looking forward to that. I'm I'm glad that was talked about ten years ago, I think, originally, and uh, I guess you know, slated it. But but no, I'm glad. So that project is moving, and uh, it's going to be continuous. They're going to do Carnahan side, then come over to the other side, and done. That's great. Correct. That's great. Um, now the striping up in Broadway, on yes. Broadway. Okay, I'm getting calls like weekly, people slipping on the new tape. You know the uh, the taping. Oh. Okay. You know the crosswalks. Uh huh. Uh, and I talked to Amanda about it. Was it Amanda? Yeah, yeah, Amanda, yeah. yeah. I talked to Amanda about it. She said that you all were looking into some sort of, you know, coarse type of sandpaper type of something that we put on that, where people don't fall. I don't have a problem with it. I've crossed it many times, but maybe it's my shoes. I don't know. You know, but I do get a lot of calls that people are yeah. slipping on that. I don't know. Which? Yeah, on the the, the taping. The, you know, the, the, the new painting. Yeah. I don't know that's what it up is. there. Yeah, so some taping. So. Yep. So and back to Broadway, you know, and we talked about this. And first of all, I want to say. I think we'll put a bike lane down there because it's partly my district too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, she. <laughs> okay, so I, I do want to say, Karina, you know, I've had nothing but good experiences with your department. You know, when there's an issue, you're on it, or Eric's on it, or Amanda's on it, or, or is Michael the engineer? Michael? He's the engineer on this project. Yeah, he's the engineer. Yeah. Oh, he's the engineer on that project. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my question is, remember we put the flex poles there, yeah. and I had to call you. I said, yeah. you know, people were, like, screaming at me. I was up there with Michael and Amanda. Yep. And we were at a corner, and I said, and, and you could just see it. People were like, get rid of these things. You know, they're coming by, right. and, and they're screaming and yelling. And it was because, of course, it's for safety, but it actually made it less safe because of the positioning of these poles. And that has me frightened for when we put in our permanent ball, bollards, when we put our permanent concrete bollards in. Those are just temporary, the flex poles, we know. Yeah. Now we're putting the permanent ones in, but even now they came up and made some changes for me, right, which yeah. I'm grateful for. But even now, they're just still so tight. Like I feel like we took a safe driving thing. I, I do believe it's safer for pedestrians across at the T stations, but uh, you know, cars now have to go out into the oncoming traffic, and it's like ah, uh, I feel like we made it less safe than right. in trying to make it more safe. Believe it or not. And you did take some pulls away, and, and it made it better. But it's still, people are banging them. And, you know, it's just like, uh, I just want to make sure when the bollards come and yep. we, we position them, I'd like to be there and be like, okay, this one's going here. This one's going there, you know. And just, I, okay. I'm not an engineer, again. And I know they probably go by some specs as to where they should be positioned. But it just didn't make any sense to me at all. I was like so frustrated because my phone is ringing off the hook. People are saying, Are you responsible for this? I'm like, no, I'm trying to get rid of them. But um, right. so anyway, they've got a picture of me backing up over one, you know. So, so they're, they're, they've really become like uh, the adjustments you made are good enough for now until we do something permanent. I'll say that. But, but I'm frightened as to where the bollards are going to go because they're going to be permanent. Yep. And I know we got some beautiful artwork that we, we were all agreed on, and that's all great, and that project's it's going to be beautiful. It really is. And that neighborhood's going to change, and it is changing as we speak. And, um, so, so I just want to make sure we get that right. I'm just afraid, I guess, to put bollards where people are going to be scraping into them and banging into them again. But Right. 
So you make a couple of great points to, just to raise. One uh, is that we do, for the traffic calming projects, for projects like Broadway, um, for, for some uh, projects that we've had uh, uh, with pedestrian crossing islands, um, you know, we, we do collect data before mm -hmm. and after, and we right. do, you know, part of the reason why we do the flex posts um, is so that we can make those adjustments. And there still are some tweaks that we need mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. um, on the Broadway um, project. So some things that we're seeing out there that we're going to need to adjust some line striping, um, maybe still some more um, uh, of the flex post before we go with the with the permanent ones. And so um, that really does let us, you know, try before we buy. Um, so that uh, is a great thing. Um, one other change that will happen in the in the coming year actually is uh, we're gearing up to do it now. Um, is that we uh, had previously um, the DPW construction division, what we, we relied exclusively on um, the construction division to um, install and change and modify the flex posts. And they're they are a wonderful division and also, um, you know, very stretched very thin. Um, and so that, that did lead to some time delays in making the adjustments in the way um, uh, that we may have wanted. And so we are training our own um, sign and paint maintenance specialists now to also, as so that we have some re redundancy and resilience. Yeah, so we can do it in-house now. Well, we, we always did it in-house. It was just that uh, it was, uh, we relied on our on our um, sister department sure. um, to, to factor our work into the flow that was already coming um, at them. And this will allow us to have a little bit more control yeah. So you will have over control the timeline. over who, who goes out there and when they go out there. Because right. it's coming from your department. <laughs> so, Much well, easier. well ho Absolutely. hopefully we can still lean on them because, because uh, yeah, you know, right, our, yeah. our, our folks are still going to need to paint the, the yeah. lines and saying that, hang the signs and all of that. But they will also have, be crossed trained yeah. so that we can have some um, kinds of uh, uh, yeah. redundancy yeah. in the system to be able to respond more quickly because there was a time lag um, in adjusting those yeah. and that's not going that's not going to happen in, I think until spring right. as far as the painting and you know mm -hmm. the, the permanent bollards but um, I just want to make sure that I'm like there and I see like where these bollards are gonna go I just you know um, okay. uh, the other thing side the sidewalk gap Right. Uh, you were talking about that's only on city properties. That's not private property. So there are the this was a grant that we received okay. from. So this is not city mm -hmm. money. It's a grant that we received from PennDOT um, in order to address. So these were in um, uh, uh, communities that are CDBG right. eligible. They're communities that have um, lower levels of. Uh, home ownership, more absentee property owners, more transit dependency, less car mm -hmm. ownership. So there are communities that really rely right. on the ability to uh, to walk. In some instances, mm -hmm. there are places where sidewalks have never been. Yep. They were never constructed to, to mm -hmm. begin with. Um, but it's really uh, imperative for these communities to be able to have this, this completed um, sidewalk network and so uh, a significant number of the sidewalks are on city properties and so right, right. or URA or other publicly owned sure. because we also have higher rates um, but not limited to that if but you it's decide not limited to that. If we, it's best for if the, there is one right. property that you know is 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 there in the middle of the block which means that a person in a wheelchair would yes, not be able right. to travel from one end of the block to another right. um, in those places where we've identified these critical gaps then we are going right. ahead now if that's um, private property do you have to get permission from the homeowner or are we allowed to just come in there and put a sidewalk? so we're working with law this is a new program and so right. we're still working right. out right. Um, right. some of these aspects to it we we would give notice yeah. um, because it, it is in the right of way so we're not doing anything that is beyond the right of way these right. are all um, sidewalk improvements that are in the right of way of the street um, not on private property itself mm -hmm. uh, but adjacent to mm -hmm. privately held properties um, and, and I, so yeah and I wouldn't think there so would be would much notice, of an objection if you're putting a new sidewalk in front of some, somebody's home they're, they're, but they're, other than the neighbor really, saying why are they getting a new sidewalk and I'm not you well, know. there's there's that also, but again, these were you know somewhat right. surgically selected because based Got on it. the demographics right. of the communities yeah. and their need. But there there may be some object objections yeah. to putting in the yeah, sidewalk. Yeah, maybe. But right. This right. is something that for the safety sure. of the public, um, and and this is the first year. Yeah. So and because it was a grant uh, funded program, um, I think it will again give us information about how we can continue to improve our sidewalk sure. network throughout the city. Sure. And you said we have 180 bridges we have to maintain. 
I think that's the, is that our exact number? It, it, it's approximate, yeah. yeah. That includes, uh, uh, could, it will, it, once we get it rebuilt. Once, then it'll be 181 bridges. So uh, I haven't priced bridges lately, but I know bridges are expensive, right? I mean, whether it's stopping, just stopping the traffic, I mean, alone, right? Expensive. So uh, most of that is state grant money? Is that how we pay for that? Bridges over 20 feet in length are part of the, the national you know, bridge inspection program, yeah. I think those are eligible for the matches where it's 95%, uh, 80% federal, 15% state, we contribute 5%. Uh, there glad. are some small projects that we tackle with our own money. But I'm glad to hear that, yeah. There's not enough of the state money either. Sure, right, So right, sure, we sure. still, that is, we need to compete right, with right, throughout right, the state and with right. communities across right. it in order to get those resources um, to do it. Does your department actually inspect the bridges? So the bigger bridge is over 20 feet. Um, PennDOT handles it for us. We're talking 20 feet. 20 length. feet in length. Okay. Uh, along along yeah. the, the driving direction. Um, so PennDOT handles the inspections for the larger bridges. Right. Uh, they bill us a, a percentage of the cost. They cover a, a bulk of it. Smaller bridges or bridges that are not road bridges, like a pedestrian bridge, yeah. are the city's responsibility. Yeah. Okay. And that's, uh, again, something that we will, they, um, uh, have uh, we've not kept pace with inspection on right. the smaller right. bridges right. Uh, in this coming year? That's something that we uh, now do, will, will will undertake. So we can do bring we all have that qualified to. inspectors, or do we have to hire that out? This gentleman sitting next to me <laughs> is, that right is a yeah. certified uh, am, bridge inspector. Yes. Um, well, twenty feet is not a very long bridge, so not. you know that qualifies for pretty much. I don't know any bridges myself that are under twenty feet. Tell you the truth, a lot of parks bridges yeah, and things sure, like that, right. old box culverts right. and things. Um, most of it, you know, we will use consultants to help because they're the experts and Absolutely. they have staffing, right. but we do have some limited in-house sure. capability. Sure, you can look underneath and see if it's rusting and sure. stuff like that, right? I mean, so, I, you know, again, your department, uh, you know, I feel is professional, uh, responsive, and, you know, attentive to my needs. And so, so I, I thank you for that. And um, one last thing was did you see the story where that neighborhood and i can't remember if it was in pennsylvania where it was where they put in that back words parallel parking that you wanted to do up in i did, right? I oh, did you didn't not see but <laughs> what was the uh, oh they're up in arms yeah i think it is it might be like i want to say like newcastle or somewhere yeah. you know, some okay. little town like that i know you say Don't that worry. right right i know but it's an adjustment it's an it, so. adjustment okay no that's it thank you appreciate it I always back in, but not into. Uh, so I know it's easy sweat. getting back. I mean, not into. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, first, I want to ask about. Well, first, let me start with the good stuff. Um, and I told you before, uh, the people that worked over on Diana Street, uh, they they do quality work, and uh, they were very nice with the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now that I can actually <laughs> feel it <laughs> personally, <yes>. personally, <laughs> um, the the guys have been very very nice, hardworking, uh, thinking of the people that live there. So I really have to give this company credit, uh, and also union. So um, they. Uh, are doing, I'll let you know how it goes, because there, there's a lot of work there. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're doing a great this job. This is List Street, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to, to say that that's worked out, and I'm sure they'll be working all winter mm -hmm. there. Uh, uh, well, they've done it down at um, LA General Hospital. They're working on a cancer center down there. They've been all last winter they were working too. So mm -hmm. I'm sure these guys will be working as much as they can through any kind of weather. Um, but, uh, and uh, I have very good results out of working with your staff. Uh, most of your staff, you know, Tommy's great. And um, I keep wanting to call him Chris, your deputy. Uh, 
Jeff. Jeff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff is getting trained or he'd be here. So, yeah. and, yeah. and you're certified as a bridge uh, check router. Check her out, that's right. <laughs> <For> inspector. <laughs> inspector, yeah. So after I heard about the Swindell Bridge and um, California Avenue, I guess you ran out there, and I see that there's going to be some attention taken to those. We're going to try to put a little bit of money into into both of those bridges yeah. um, to, to ensure that they remain safe. Yeah, because the concrete is falling down, and... 279 is right below. Mm, it's like the uh, Greenfield. The Swindale Bridge is the East Street or Charles Street. We have a number of different names for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very dangerous, but thank you for speedy delivery on that. Um, and the California Street Bridge. I mean, when you can start seeing, you know, the street or. Uh, 279 through, you know it's time. And um, uh, Larry Street's going to be finished, um, I guess, this year. Yes, during the construction season, yep. Right. Yep. Um, how about the city steps there on Pig Hill? They, well, the Rialto steps, is that? Yeah. Um, did you we, we have... Um, we have some funding for next year to do some work on that. Okay. Um, it won't. It'll be. It'll be enough to address the major items. Okay. It won't be a rebuild. It'll won't be, be a complete a, rebuild. It'll be a. A fix. Well, it's so there's nobody that's getting hurt going up and down, and they have a railing to hold on to. Yep. Um, <clears throat> do you take care of the war memorials? We do not. No. Okay, so none of that is under you, but no. yet um, you were talking about art. The arts are to put arts in a park. Or... We have incorporated um, public art into, and, and, and hope to do more of that, uh, incorporating public art into our right-of-way projects, so, so the projects that are in the right-of-way. So okay, Broadway so that... Avenue, uh, for example, is, is at the Art Commission today getting approved, we hope. Uh, for painted uh, curb extensions. We did a uh, supported uh, Councilman Straussberger in a painted intersection. Uh, we had the painted intersection, I think, in Carrick as well. So uh, we do have art, uh, but in the right of way. It's not the war memorials. Okay, yeah. it's not the war memorial. No. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. You don't take care of the war memorials. That's public works. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll leave out for public works. Okay, uh, bus stops. I I know we have we have had um, that's Port Authority. That's the county. So it's when, a combination. Okay, um, when you have a business district like I have, and one person don't like people standing where they live. And you have handicapped people that get on at that stop. I don't know if you've heard this or not yet, but it's go been going on. Um, they moved the bus stop down the street where there's a doctor there and a hairdresser, and you know they get transportation in and out. And there's no parking except for handicapped bus for, or it would push everybody else down the street, and it's No, we're familiar with it. The the where we um, uh, bus stops are are not frequently moved, but when they are moved, it is to um, address concerns regarding safety or operations. Is it one concern because it, out of it we now have people that are handicapped? It's a systemic concern so it's it's really not you know we don't move bus stops based on a, on a complaint system or, or something like that it's it is to provide for the operation in consultation with the we, we make the determination the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure makes the determination of uh, final approval of a bus stop location but obviously we do that in very very close consultation with the Port Authority 
Um, it wasn't done with the community, and Port Authority didn't know anything about it because I, I was working with them. And um, but it has hurt that part of the business district, and it has hurt <coughs> handicapped that get on at that stop, and it seems like it's only pleased one person. So, if you just look at that, that would be great. Um, and I'll go out with you uh, if you want. Okay, and uh, the driving pledge, have you gotten any back from we have the been. residents from outside the city of Pittsburgh? Well, it's directed for the residents inside the city First of Pittsburgh. First you get the ones from outside, then start talking to the ones that live well, there. Well, we do know <laughs> that no one wants anyone to speed in their neighborhood, but they are sometimes the ones speeding in someone else's neighborhood. Um, and so we've really targeted it to... Um, to our own residents, um, we've 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 pushed it out as have our partners in the in the county and the port authority, and so we do have um, signatories from residents that are beyond the city limits. So we have gotten actually um, uh, uh, quite a few, a couple hundred um, participants in the program, and it really does make a difference. As 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 you know, many of you know who have the traffic calming. Um, measures in your neighborhoods um, as we go out and measure speeds on these residential streets um, nearly all of our community residential streets are posted at 25 miles an hour and that's a maximum limit it's not a suggestion um, I have traffic out they take turns of where they're at we it's, see it's really it is you know uh, fairly common that we see, you know, rates of 90% non-compliance with the maximum posted speed limit, where we have median speeds that are approaching 40 miles an hour uh, on 25 mile an hour streets. And many of those people that we observe are uh, residents of the city. And so, you know, we don't need to uh, install thousands of, of speed humps if we can encourage residents to travel the, the legal speed because that is what's necessary to preserve the lives of our own neighbors. I brought them up for the first time and now we're getting them, but I don't have one in my district. A speed hump? Right. Uh, well, I'm sure you will be uh, well, too I also, long. <laughs> I also brought up first the capping over the highway yeah. um, because that's what we wanted to do to bring the north side back together and it's being used up the hill so quite a few things I brought up that weren't done and now voila but I haven't seen it on the north side um, okay I, I know I asked for this once before you do traffic studies too uh, not me personally, but our department does. Yes. So the, how many traffic studies have we done for the bike lanes? So all of the all of the bike lanes are the result of a traffic study that was done. So uh, assessing what the impact for each will be. one. Because when I asked for it, they said there were none done. So the, all of them have an assessment that's done on these streets to ensure that there's adequate space and capacity, that the need exists, and that the facilities that we install. Um, are appropriate for the context an of that street. actual traffic study on Those, each street. That, yes, that constitutes a traffic study. Okay, I'd like to see those by the date they were done. Because, I mean, there's been 66 um, bike crashes this year so far. That's true. And, and some of them just go, and then they just stop. But the uh, the danger to people on bicycles if they're not accommodated is is even greater, um, and so we we um, yes. Yeah. So we will continue to expand. Me and my the husband would give a thumbs bicycle. up when they actually stop at a stop sign or a red light, but they're far in between so that's why i need piles of those papers to give on and i blow the horn at cars too oops excuse me 
I blow the horn on cars oh, too that aren't that. doing too well. Um, let me ask you about the CDBG money. CDBG money is for CDBG areas, but what is first to happen is that <coughs> a CDBG area should be getting as much as everyone else is. And then you apply the CDBG dollars over that. Is that being done? Yes, it is. So this beginning uh, uh, this year, 2019, um, there's no longer uh, CDBG money being invested in the in the street resurfacing program, for example. Um, so the street no bond money is street street resurfacing uh, is is uh, coming from the same source of funding, so that we're sure that all of that is equitably distributed across the districts. Yeah, I don't think it has, but so, um, but bond money is being u utilized for asphalting. Uh, it is being utilized for street resurfacing because this is something that, you know, while uh, while ideally we would like to resurface our streets every 10 years, um, that's uh, routinely we have. And in particular, the, the low volume streets that don't have uh, transit vehicles on them and those many of these streets, as many of your, your neighbors and constituents and residents will attest, um, uh, can go 40 years or more right. without right. resurfacing. And so it is a long-term durable investment. But there are streets that, well, their asphalt last year and this year, you're already starting to see, you know, the second layer coming out from under it. Um, do we have somebody that's checking to see how much we have inspectors down? yes we have inspectors on all of our uh crews and and i uh and we do go back we have a two-year warranty on the paving of the streets and so if there's any of those instances when that's happening then we oh, do have the okay. uh we do have the paving contractors go back out okay um and make the the repairs we are using uh a um uh, we are no longer doing um, the just sort of surface treatments. All of the streets that we do are milled first and and overlaid, and so we have uh, adopted a, a superior sort of street resurfacing um, approach than um, uh, several years in the past um, was it was uh, applied on the city streets, and so these streets are. They are lasting, and we're seeing it even, as you recall, my first uh, year here, uh, we had uh, more than a few potholes um, that, <laughs> um, that they do come back every year. Do you year, know it cost me $1,600 on my car from hitting But they've been, but we've, we definitely have seen uh, fewer of them. Um, so you can see the quality of the paving work that is being done because we're, we are seeing you But know, we could do complaints. more if we had our own asphalt plant, even if they were portable and would buy those instead of allowing the contractors to actually figure out what you're being given every year for asphalting. I know that's been a topic of discussion. Yes. So. We can talk more about that later. Um, but the thermoplastics, since you brought it up, that really bothers me because uh, people have fallen on that. And if not behind our building, but uh, the old jail, we still call it the old jail. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Because the it's name. the old jail. It's the old jail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, from scraping and salting, uh, the thermoplastic is pulling up. And really, when you're using that, you're supposed to have your gutters where that can't go down into the gutter. There, there's a concern out there with the thermoplastic. I think there's some place in California that they actually stopped utilizing it because it it can cause cancer it's actually i don't know if they've proven that out you there or it. not but no you, when you work with that it's dangerous oh, stuff got it. i mean they're supposed to have face masks on right. 
they're supposed to not even have their own clothes showing. They're supposed to be fully clothed because they can be hurt. And just breathing well, in it must be the adhesive then. this powder. It's not the actual tape. Right. No, right. it comes in like a pot or form. It's a, it's it's here. We've we've provided all of our workers with the protective gear. Yeah, there is there is protective gear, just as with many of the other. Are they you know, wearing? They I mean, the are face trained mask, and obliged everything. to wear that. Yes, we have we have bought it, and that is an expectation of the foreman that they will make sure that their their crews are safe. We've provided all of the appropriate equipment to make sure that that happens, and we do care for the safety of our and workers. A, and, and especially breathing. That. They have they have because, all the equipment. Because I mean, right? later on, they could get cancer, and that could be the cause of it. So we have slips and falls. We have it going into our gutters. I mean, it's a great, great for Florida, but places like we are, I'm not quite as sure if it's lasting as long. Now I know the paint that we were using was probably the cheapest paint. You could tell, like my relatives all lit, worked in I didn't even know those areas cool. years ago, but. The paint that they can use probably it would cost about a hundred, hundred and twenty dollars to do the same length as what we're paying, like maybe fifteen hundred in thermoplastic. So the thermoplastic can last about seven years. Uh, waterborne paint um, needs With to be re streets and yes, scraped up. Yes, it can. The thermoplastic properly applied. Got to come to my uh, district. Uh, has uh, uh, um, is durable to about seven years. The waterborne paint needs to be repainted every year. That's because it's cheap. So you try. We need to repaint it every year. We do do material testing. Yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Because the kind that was used before and it was a good. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't have to go doing. I mean, as soon as you put those lines on there, it's like whitewash. Mm -hmm. You know, it comes right off. Because mm -hmm. um, I think it was how cheap the paint was that they mm -hmm. used. It. But that can be for another day, too. But I just wanted to bring that up because, I mean, uh, I almost fell on it. And um, I don't know. It seems like it's gone over here now. Like, because I would show people the examples of it and to concrete? go down the drains and into our water system is not a good thing mm -hmm. yeah it can't be used on concrete so we use epoxy on concrete mm -hmm. well part of your issue is it's on, not it's not thermal plastic is that asphalt or what is that back here i don't know the street I'll you're talking about the broadway is concrete which is no right right behind our building is that as that's asphalt? Oh, Ross. Ross is concrete. No. Oh. Yeah, Ross. It's, it's concrete. Right. Yeah. That's where I tell our people to go for an example. But, um, okay. I think I asked you, but oh, just one last thing, and I know it don't have to do with the budget, but that poor lady that hasn't been able to park in her garage. And the guys that asphalted the street wanted to scrape that so that she'd be able to get her car in her garage. Do you think before we get a lawsuit against us that something can be done over there? Um, we've looked at that a few times. We've yeah, made your various deputy yeah, looked we've made at various it. adjustments to it. So my understanding was she's now able to get down there. I the, were they out again? Yeah, they've been out. Yeah, we came out okay. this year again. Then I want to so. thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. Because I didn't get a call <laughs> and say, hey, they were out there and they fixed so, that. So yeah. I thought I would with that one. But um, thank you again for that. But it's... You can uh, confirm it. Mm -hmm. I know uh, I can call some people any time of the day or they're out of town or they're with their family, you'll call me back. So I really appreciate that. Um, I don't have your cell phone number. Oh, we'll, we'll get it to you. Do that. I? <laughs> yeah, apologies for she the dogs in the background. But, yeah. but I have most of them. And, um, you know, I, I have to say that anytime I've brought a concern to you, 
or you or your deputy or Tommy or anyone that I've dealt with one-on-one. -on -one. They've been great to work Thank with. Thank you. And this is a very sticky, hard, um, but it's a woman doing it. <laughs> <laughs> with 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 a strong team behind her, so yeah. I yes. appreciate that. But um, did I mention the Davis Avenue Bridge, though? That's you have. The, yeah. I I talked to you about that. Yep. And we've submitted a so. pen dot multi -mill. Yeah, we've talked about that, and we have a, a grant in to to try and bring that back as a connection. Okay, because um, uh, for the safety vehicles is what I'm concerned about the most. And the other neighborhood don't care for all the traffic either. But that's why we have humps. Okay. Councilwoman, the, thank I, I you think, so much. I think Councilman yeah. uh, yeah, Cockhouse, one more thing. Quick questions. Sure. Uh, your e bike, is it e bike? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to ride? Is it? that electric slash pedal? It is, it is an electric pedal assist. So if I stop okay. pedaling, right. the bike stops moving. Oh, okay, so you have to pedal, but you have you assistance have, from the motor. I have assistance, so I feel like right? a superhero when hills. I go up the hill. No wonder you look so strong on that right? thing. I didn't Isn't know you were great? cheating. Yeah, <laughs> I was <laughs> totally <laughs> cheating. So. I'm totally, no, no, no. It just it, it's, it doesn't show up the hill. So it doesn't, it's not that this. powerful. Can you ride that through the Liberty Tunnels? I would not, okay. but I suppose I, you know. I yeah, would I not. don't know. I mean, that's what no, I'm asking. I mean, they, because they, that would be a mode of transportation for people from it, my district. It, it but. would be, and that's one of the things that, you know, we, we hope that we'll um, yeah. be able to, to introduce yeah. as part of the public bike share system. So Healthy Ride is looking also at, at yeah. uh, expanding their invite. So it, it, they, they are just a little bit more juice yeah. than a regular bicycle, right. but so, they, they do not. So you keep can't pace do the speed with, limit. You can't no, do, they do not keep pace 30 with mile an hour. No, it's, you can do. 15 mile an hour. I could probably do 15 mile an yeah. hour. So, yeah, so you wouldn't oh, be permitted to go across the Liberty Bridge and no, through the Liberty Tunnels. Okay. I'm sorry. No, so I, would, I would not go through not. the Liberty. You, you could I would be not. pulled you over and cited, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I, w yes, probably, but I wouldn't wouldn't do it, nor would I advise right. others to do That's it That's right. Either. That's right. Because <laughs> then you have 51 on the other side, and then right. it could really get yeah. scary. Yeah. And the other thing was Star Camp in Brookline. Uh, I spoke to Amanda, and one of the reasons that- Star Camp? Star Camp is a street, sorry. One of the reasons why I feel like I don't need to talk to you on a regular basis mm -hmm. because you do have a great staff. Jeff, yep. Amanda, Eric, you know, so anytime yeah. they usually settle it before it even yep. comes to you. And I spoke to Amanda about this, so I don't want her thinking I'm displeased and not getting results. She said she would look into it. I felt while we're putting speed bumps in, and this is going to be terrible humps. for bumps. No, no, it's speed. true. It is speed humps. Is that right? Bumps. There yeah. is a difference. Okay. Right. <laughs> You're very late. Yeah. Senior centers, uh, yeah. speed humps. What's you know? No, <laughs> humps are legal. Bumps are okay. Correct. Correct. Okay. That, oh, so they're actually a different. It's not just a different name. It's a different. It's yeah. They have a longer. They have a Got longer it. arc. Yes. On the right. speed humps. Right. So. Right. Mm -hmm. so and and I would hate. This, this weighs on me, okay, mm -hmm. and it's not my responsibility, nor is it yours, I think, but they had a traffic study done there. But I have a woman and other neighbors who called me. They have a bunch of kids there, y young mm -hmm. little kids, you know, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. playing out in the street all the time. Um, she's requesting speed humps. She said, I'll get the signatures from the neighbors. <coughs> Apparently, we did a traffic study there, I think, a year ago, and it didn't result in thinking, oh, we need to, to do this. Mm -hmm. But every time I think, oh, gosh, if one of those kids, you know, something happens to one of those kids, I'm going right. to feel responsible unless I keep on you. And then that's your, <laughs> then you can live with it. Fair enough. But, but yeah. I am, you know, I'm trying to fight for her. Uh, if we can do another study, if that's required, I don't know. But well, and speed humps I think are, just one right. is all we would need, you know. Speed, speed humps are not the only tool. No, so I we get, can right. we can go back again and sure. see. But, you know, it's, it's obviously we want to be very data driven. Um, right. But. The experience of our city is just as important, sure. and so we right. can we can look again and see yeah. if there's other tools. It might not be that a speed hump is the right thing, but there might be some other tools that we yeah, can Yeah, and, and they're address. open for anything. They're mm -hmm. not hell bent on give right. us a speed hump. Uh, you know, they're whatever whatever we can do to assist that flashing light. You know, so that was it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Wonderful. Uh, if there's nothing else from other council members, I'm going to relinquish these good uh, people from the administration and bring this. Um, session to a close. Again, I'm Deborah Gross. I had to step in for Councilwoman um, Teresa Kale-Smith, who was called away. 
And I want to remind council members that this was our first of our few weeks of budget hearings. So we're going to be recessing. Mm -hmm. um, and for the public, we will be reconvening the budget hearings tomorrow morning, Thursday, November 22nd at 10 a.m. with the Department of Public Safety. Uh, and then also tomorrow following that at 1.30, I will be chairing uh, the budget hearing on the Department of Permits, Licenses, and Inspections. I am losing my voice. It's been a long day. Uh, I think I said that was at 1.30 tomorrow. Um, so with that, I just need a motion to recess. So moved. So moved. Thank, you. Thank you. We are recessed. Okay.